Hello, Halo fans, and welcome to the HCS DreamHack Dallas Global Invitational. We are live from, well, I think you guessed it, Dallas, Texas. And it's just well, Huss is oh there. Oh, no, no, right there. It's in for the emergency pull. Flag is out. Both flags off the stand. Oh, my goodness. SSG are rolling right now, and it's going to be finished off with a triple kill. Players here on back A, as well as PD. He might be able to finish this here. Line up a triple kill. Snake bite. There's another one in front of you. It's a simple job to close it out with the trip ski. Snake bite. So now they have the player advantage, and they can start to think about how they want to take this one. Both teams undefeated across the first four here, of course, also on strongholds as well, as we are ready to get into our first game of the Grand Finals here at the HCS Global Invitational at DreamHack Dallas. We've got Halo on our screens, we've got Battle Rifle shooting, it can only mean one thing, the Grand Finals is underway here at DreamHack Dallas, it's FaZe versus Space Station, and the POV of Frosty is what we're going to enjoy first. So much pressure on both of these sides as we said, oh my god, by the way, bound off screen now, just hopping away after a beautiful no-scope. Coming in on his POV, he will connect there and now move into cuts. Well, it's been a great start here for FaZe. And remember, these two teams met up, of course, in the winner's bracket final. It went all the way to a game five to decide who was going to be in this final. And for SSG, they came up short. Now they'll have to beat FaZe twice if they want to be champions. Yeah, this tournament just full of game five so far. And luckily, we have an even better treat here. A seven-game series in your first. Whoa, whoa, Frosty and Royal 2 combining from the pillars and the sandbags for a nice double team there as well. Two dead for SSG. Oh, Renegade nearly takes down Bounce as well but Frosty said don't worry about it buddy I've got your back and look at FaZe going they are on fire at the start of this game Space Station barely on the board Penguin hasn't got a kill before FaZe Clan are gonna cap the first two of the game they're up one to zero while well, they do it with less than a minute of total play on the game clock there as the clock now strikes 449 but already one point on the board here all eight players up so this is a key moment for this next rotation see a couple of trades going down which means that FaZe have control of the tower although Stella is causing some problems Snakebite will pick up that kill to make sure that FaZe do have momentary control. Renegade finds one. Bound's going to challenge. A little bit of a peek, a little bit of a prod, and maybe going to be able to finish off Renegade as well. And how impressive has Renegade been all weekend long? Really picking up where he left from Charlotte. Oftentimes we see his KD right around anywhere from 1.22 all the way to 1.6 all weekend long. Shroud screen goes down, though. An evasive one here for SSG. Somehow Renegade just dives and dodges between those grenades and stays alive on Nest. Yeah, but how about the timing on that shroud screen, right? I mean, Renegade is lining up a shot onto one of three different players on phase, trying to flood through those dummies, and the line of sight is cut off almost immediately. So Renegade now from phase has got to deal with Bound, who's still alive on also, that tower. Also, what a fascinating representation there of just this gameplay, right? How often do you see a player, Renegade just gets taken down, how often do you see a player sitting alive on Nest Bridge as three fall for phase Clan for 45 seconds of time? That shows you just how tactical these teams are in waiting to make sure they don't make the mistake before they push for that hill control. Really interesting situation on the map now. FaZe Clan have to break Space Station who have full control of this tower hill. The good news for them, as you can see on your screen, Royal 2's got an overshield to play with. So he's going to get the first kill. We have a 4v3 on the map, Ooh. but there's that damn green gun coming in from Eco to shred all of the shields away. By the way, FaZe not just on the board here in terms of points, but also outslaying right now 19-10 to 10 as 3 fall yet again for SSG. Stellar's your last player alive. Overshield makes the difference, though. It's the first First kill that goes down to phase, which gives him the opening to play off the back off. The green gun turns hands into the of Royal 2, and now you're seeing FaZe Clan. They're going to pretty much tie up this second hill. You got to feel like coming off of Charlotte. We knew that FaZe would be focused coming into this event. So much time to think about that one kill difference in that first grand final. And it has shown two dead for each side. Now Snake Bite will now rotate back tower with sniper rifle in hand. Horse is bound away as well. Somewhat of a warning shot coming in, but now he's going to have to start connecting with a few bodies. Stella does get the kill onto Frosty. So all the weapons now in the hand, but the flank also coming in. And Snake Bite decides, hey, we know Space Station are pretty good with these weapons. I'd rather than not have them. Snake Bite just yeets all the weapons off the map. Not a bad play. And also he timed it well because when you're getting pushed back tower like that in the jump up, you might not be aware that a player is pushing that fast. And they could have stolen the heat wave and the sniper, but who else? But Snake Bite to be aware of that push and make sure that those weapons get played. Really important kill coming in from Eco there. You saw he got the first kill, but traded out by Royal 2. So it's a 3v3 on the map. This is FaZe's last chance to break. Renegade flies in. Stella's shot is steady, and he manages to take down his former teammate. Space Station will get the hill. They tie this game up on one-to-one -one as we head over towards the garage. Wow, and what a great representation once again of the way that Space Station is approaching that play, right? They take their time. They let 
Renegade stay alive on Nest and Nest Bridge for about 40 seconds of play, and you very rarely see that as this overshield pops up. In the end, it pays off for them, and they get the point on the board. How about this flank coming in from Penguin, though? He's still got work to do, and even though he picked up two, Renegade is going to be there to scoop up yet another overshield for FaZe. That's two in a row now for them as Renegade starts to patrol top mid. Man, what a tough thing to see in your death screen is Renegade just grabbing that free overshield after you fell, and now he is just going to be dealing the damage here on Sandbags. They try to put as many guns as they can on it, but he still has the height advantage. I mean, look at the damage that Renegade is doing right now. Royal 2 is going to say, I will take advantage of it. He picks up one, Renegade picks up another. Eco trying to be a problem, but Renegade will get the trade. SSG, three in the death screen. Snakebite inside of the garage. Royal 2 gets the final kill onto Bound. This is guaranteed time now for FaZe Clan. I love that from Renegade, right? He easily could have backed down off a scoreboard, but instead he saw someone as key door. He's like, where are they? Where are they? I want Adam. He flies right in. He gets the trade in a way that most players would not be able to from no shields. He gets a little bit of time on the board, and they get just about 40% of the way on the third hill. One thing that's certainly standing out in this game is weapon control. How many times have we seen phase with a snipe, phase with a heat wave? Now you're seeing it from the point of view of Frosty. And the one opportunity maybe that the space station had to get them in the hand, Snakebite recognized it back on that tower, threw them off the map, and that's why you're seeing phase dominating the slaves at the moment. Yeah, I love this too. Look at Frosty, just goes back. Two players are dead, so he comes back to Rat Tunnel here with the heat wave. Gonna connect with this one as well, and they just dropped back enough. We'll see if they can stay alive off this push, though, as two fall off the back of that. This should be time for SSG. Yeah, it's a good job from SSG just to make sure that they force FaZe out of that hill. Now they're sitting at themselves, and Stella's going to spot out Renegade. Renegade with some pretty good shots. It's going to cause the distraction and buy the time for other teammates to get involved with this fight. But Penguin around this corner is going to poke out. Manages to take him down for just a few seconds. 3v3 on the map, but more time here for SSG. And if SSG can hold and Stella can pick up a couple more kills, then maybe SSG might squeak into a lead here. Big job by Penguin to stay alive there. Would have been very easy to trade there, as you see as he comes across. Now two players here stuck on window. Stuck on window and the overshield coming up. So really interesting decisions to be made by both teams. And it's actually going to be FaZe who choose to go for the overshield. But they oh. do they have the time to get the break at the last second. They're inside of the hill. The timing is perfect from FaZe. Space Station find themselves four dead, and this will be surely an opportunity to go up two to one. A guaranteed hill, a perfect push there at the end, and now Penguin's gonna come try to fly in. He should be able to get it. We'll see just at the end, the stop, stop comes in. FaZe is gonna get it, they go up two to one at the last second. As you said, perfect timing there for Renegade, off of the overshield grab as well. So difficult to make that decision. In that moment, do we play for the overshield? Have we got time to capitalize on picking it up and yeah. turn it into a point? FaZe time it perfectly, and Space Station, unfortunately, from their point of view, will fall behind by one hill, but now they have great control over the OS side of the map, and we know how tough it is to break this hill, especially with the OV spawning over here as well that could certainly help you out. Yeah, all eight players alive right now. These next few kills, the opening damage might decide where this hill goes just because of how isolated it is on the map. You're already 50% of the way done for Space Station Gaming. Interesting to point out as well that even though SSG are being outslayed at the moment in this game, they have won so many objective games being outslayed yeah. so far in this tournament. So don't let the stats fall you. You can see that SSG are already halfway to capping this next hill. And even though the guns aren't being as successful as FaZe is, they are still in this game and they might be on even footing. Just tells you how much of this game is positioning its routes, its sight lines, it's the way you can position your team. Not always about winning those 1v1s, but even so avoiding those 1v1s as well. It's a perfect hill from SSG. FaZe get nowhere near it. And now with two minutes and seven seconds left on the clock, the overshield battle continues. Royal 2 will pick up the kill onto Eco, and the kills are being timed here by FaZe. There's two in the death screen for SSG, and that should mean another overshield going over to them. Another kill gets picked up and traded out by Snakebite, so an overshield here for FaZe, and top mid will be locked down. Penguin sneaks by there, as eventually goes down to the dummy door. Frosty wants to find out exactly where he goes. Is two dead for both sides here. Overshield pop in right now. Anyone here to stop it? Penguin will get a touch on it, but it's only a little throw down to the ground. Eco taken down. Great teamwork now coming in from FaZe. Just baiting, switching, and now Snakebite. He gets himself a yellow jacket to play with. He's looking good inside that hill. Two dead here. Like you said, doing very well. He's going to play these angles. The Overshield's going to let him tank a little bit of extra damage as well. 50% of this hill already in the hands of FaZe. Looking to go into a lead. Snakebite patrolling, picking up one. Stella gets the trade with that stick, though, to take the overshield out of commission. SSG have broken here. They've slowed down FaZe, and Penguin that kill might keep this game rolling. Yeah, roll two here, though. FaZe with a tower control and a very good angle. This is a great opportunity to get into our first listen-in of the grand finals with FaZe Clan. Yeah, man, trying to get yeah, I'm trying to get to you, man. Right, Sniping 15. I'm, I'm hoping you can right? Yeah, we can hold. Hill, Ben, Ben. Nothing. You just want to tower. You just want to tower. Let's play yeah, 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 yeah. cuts. Let's play yeah, cuts. Snipe in 10, guys. Snipe in 10. Yo, listen. I'm flanking Kedor. We're going to kill the guys' cuts. Snipe in 5. Snipe in 5. Cuts weak. Cuts weak. I can kill it. On OV. On OV weak. 
I'm living, I'm living. Just keep living, right? Cut sweet, cut sweet, cut sweet. Alright, snipes up, guys, snipes up. That's one here, guys. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Two times middle, two more times, two more times. Nice, 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 nice. Yo, get the hell, heat wave in 10, heat wave in 10. Yo, spawners, spawners play for heat wave. Spawners play for heat wave. I got him, I got him. You guys hear me on heat wave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna need this. I can't play for you, right? Heat wave is up, heat wave should be up now. Yeah, he has got it. Where's he going, guys? Where's he going? Good trade. We've done dummies. Big door, big door. MP, MP, MP. So they jump out of the comms and back into our voices. It is going to be FaZe who go up 3 to 2. Royal 2 was such an important double kill that he picks up. They're so synonymous with his playstyle. Yeah, absolutely. That's what you expect him to do now. I'm just going to play this slow. That's not the first time we've seen the Shroud screen up at Nest and Nest Bridge for this rotation as well. Once again, all eight players love. Let's see where these first kills go. Bounds the first to fall. They kill Stellar as well. This could be the home stretch. Eco challenging an Eco. I tell you what, he had to take the challenge, and boy, did he take it. Now he's doing a little bit more damage to Renegade, but Renegade, off the back of the damage done by his teammates, is trying to force himself into back green. Now, how many times have we seen players being a nuisance at back green? If they stay alive for too long, it's a problem. Penguin knew that. He took him down. Especially a player like Penguin. He's got Snipe to play with. He's got four repulses to play with as well. This will not be easy. Two teammates fall, though, so here comes that phase push momentarily. When Penguin's left on his own here. He's going to have to do something magic but he does have the weapon to do it with. FaZe trying to push and off the back of deciding to let SSG have a little bit of hill time. They rotated again, not for the first time in this game, to leave the hill to prioritize the power up and SSG now find themselves having to go up against Snakebite again with an OV. I like this from Snakebite taking his time here. Penguin comes in with a repulse though, goes for the stick as well. They will get that last kill, so that will eventually be a staggered back-to-back -back two deads. Uh, overall, four dead bouncer first spawner, but he's got no room to push. FaZe now. Having a fight against SSG without the overshield. What they have done though is broken this side of the map. So they have some map control and SSG are going to have to just be patient here, bide their time and look for that pick before they can start to flood. But the only problem is that Stella is going to be taken down bottom middle, but Eco and Bound have done a great job of giving the advantage in numbers back over to SSG. It's a great route here from Snakebite. Eco might not be ready for it. Those are good shots. He's going to get extra damage as well. And he stays alive. Great work here from Snakebite, but he's going to need the help to push. He's going to need the help and he has to wait. And the problem is that SSG now control this green hill again. They're about 80% of the way to doing it they're about 80 percent all the way to capping it and eco is going to be taken down and just at the last second again the break comes in from phase clan ssg four dead and phase now have a chance to cap this hill look at the patience the timing and the discipline from snakebite he knows exactly when to go up to top middle as well they're playing game clock here phase they have the lead there's only four seconds left in this game and ssg have to fly they have to flood but they don't have the time to really impact this game phase clan they will win game number one of our grand finals. They're up one to zero. Absolutely beautiful performance from them. Like you said, not just playing the game clock, but overall just playing that map so well. Overall, just game management was on point. As you saw Renegade just staying alive, for example, on Ness as long as he needed. At the end of the game, we saw Snake fight. He pops to top mid. He does damage from sandbags and concrete. He drops back down to bottom middle, goes pillars and cuts off the mud spawners. They were always one step ahead and they do perfect execution of that first game. Shows how close these two teams are. We can use the two examples of phase deciding to prioritize the overshield pickup and that fight instead of thinking about the hill time that's kind of escaping them. The, you know, we saw Penguin stood as last alive inside that hill. FaZe decide that power up is the best thing to get here because it's going to give us not just an advantage on the next set of kills, but the ones after that as well. And this break here, where yeah. they did exactly the same thing on the garage hill, is another great example of how closely matched they are. If that goes wrong, it's the second wrong for FaZe. They don't get that hill. Exactly. I think that's actually a great example of what was really a game-changing moment to get that stop. And the confidence and the understanding of the timing, like you say, to get the overshield when they were one tick away from getting that. They timed the break perfectly. And I think that sums up what we saw from phase perfectly in that game type. Now we get ready for our game number two, which is sure to be a great one. Both of these teams, by the way, undefeated in this specific Slayer. Slayer stats overall also on your screen. Yeah, you can see a couple, uh, one more loss, I should say, in the side of Space Station. Of course, this series that we saw in the winner's bracket final between these two teams did go down to that game five Slayer where phase were able to stack up and pull out that win and put themselves in this grand final first. Now, one player to keep your eye on in this grand final and in the Slayers in particular is the man on the right side of your screen right now. That's going to be bound because even though he's had some moments of brilliance that we've seen th throughout this tournament, something been jumping out to us is there's been a few really important Slayers in a series where his stats really haven't reflected how well he's been playing. Right, exactly. I think normally we're seeing Bound popping off every single game with huge kills, very low deaths. I think in this tournament, specifically in the Slayers, you've seen higher deaths than we're used to seeing and you have to wonder exactly what type of Slayer performance he's going to bring to these grand finals. Yeah, he's going to have to make sure that he's just keeping those deaths down a little bit 
more than he has been previously. Of course, we all know that Bound has the ability to completely take over a Slayer game, to take over any game type that he is involved with for this roster. And he's just going to have to keep an eye on that. Maybe it's just a little bit of chemistry not quite there in the Slayers, switching from objective to Slayers, and the pace of the game switching up so quickly across the series is going to be vital for him to understand and for SSG to understand as well. But for FaZe, it's a perfect start, Andy. The way that they controlled, I think, the calls in the game was the most important thing. We talked about how vital communication is to this FaZe Clan roster. Yeah. You saw every call was backed and every call was executed. Yeah, and also we heard in the pregame, we got to listen in with uh, SSG just a little bit. Them talking about how communication needs to be their focus here as well. And as long as that their comms are dialed, that the right plays will follow. So you could tell on the SSG side that they're prioritizing that as well. Now for SSG, we were looking across the game types as we head into Street Slayer. And if they really want to have a chance of resetting this bracket and sending this deep, this grand final, well, they're going to have to win one of these first three or four game types and really put the pressure back on because the back end of this series is the game types where FaZe have been a little bit lackluster. We're going to get a little restart here before we get into our game number two, but it's interesting to see how the kind of dynamic of this series is set up for who favors who when it gets to game types. Yeah, certainly. I think it's going to be really interesting to see exactly how it plays out. Like you said, that game four is going to be have zero precedent in terms of total games played in Dallas as well. And I think one thing that's good to talk about on the side of SSG for Bound is that his overall Slayer KD here is a .93, right? Just below one overall still we expect bound to have higher numbers on the board in general however his slayer streets is an outlier even with a 0.93 average and his kd drops to sometimes 0.77 slayer streets he has a 1.33 here in this game number two so he might have had a little bit of inconsistency in slayer so far however this map that we're about to see on your screen he's got a enormous 1.33 we'll see if he can repeat that here yet again yeah streets is a map that really does favor a player like bound he's the ability to take a sneaky route to hit a little drop slide and find his way behind enemy lines or just hit the beat down before someone's even had time to react. He's up in your face and he's causing problems. And I'm always impressed with his ability to turn a single kill into a double kill as well. Just immediately reacting to a call out after winning his individual battle to influence something else on the map. Yeah, it feels like we've watched him mature in such a special way, right? We saw what he was able to do last season. Everyone knew, of course, Rookie of the Year. Everyone knew what he was going to be able to do. The question was, would he find the right mix of teammates? I think it's very clearly been answered that he has found that right mix. And it's been incredible to see him mature in terms of how his gameplay has evolved to do the most damage on the map possible and setting his team up for success. Crazy to talk about the drought that we were mentioning for both the sets of players that we see on our stage as well. And speaking of Bound, I mean, he's the thirstiest, thirstiest of them all, right? Because yeah. he has yet to win a LAN championship. What an opportunity it is for him to join the other seven players on the stage and really say, hey, I'm one of the best in the world and I've got the chip to prove it. Right, and also how special just for both of these teams with their trajectory, right? As we said earlier, the reign of Optic Gaming has ended and now one of these teams will be your champion as we get in to game number two here, Bound on your screen. Bound on your screen and with a Stalker rifle to start off the game. Phase kind of course, one nil up in our grand finals here after that win on King of the Hill live fire. The question is, can they put the pressure really onto Space Station now? But is Space Station actually putting the pressure onto FaZe? They will find four kills and they should get the rockets off the back of that. Great opening there on a four for one trade. If they can keep that up, they will be set up for success. Both rockets have already been used here as part of that opening rush. Do you have control of that Stalker Rifle still? Bound still alive on the map. Another easy kill going to be picked up by Penguin. Almost donated to him in a charitable way by FaZe. And 5-2 to two is the score, but the trades now come through. And even though the control was heavily in the favor of Space Station Gaming after that opening strategy, FaZe roar back into the game with three quick, quick kills in succession. Bound your last player alive in the back of the tram, and he's going to hold it down. Picks up one. Almost pumps on the second as well. That's the most you can ask for your players staying alive in the back of the tram. The game will now Ooh. go to seven to six. Or in the game with that Stalker as well. He's doing a little bit of damage, causing some problems for the Space Station side. But at eight to six, finally the game just starts to slow down for a second. Royal 2 going to try and keep that pace up though. He gets the first kill. And should get a trade as well. Eco's going to have to deal with Frosty. There will be a 1v1. And Eco's going to come out on top of that. So FaZe trying to push the pressure there. Trying to push the momentum they had. But Space Station held really well. Yeah, pretty uncharacteristic there to see the teams fall back and forth, back and forth. Three dead, three dead each side. That's how you get really messy battles on the back of the tram. Because there's damage done where both teams have evaluated. We need to make sure we push. Interesting to see here how both teams play around this rocket coming up as well. It's around 25 seconds, 22 seconds, excuse me, until the power weapon will be back on the map. And this is generally where we see... 
it almost become a round base slayer, right? Everyone's in a 4v4 scenario. Nobody wants to be first pick, because if you do, it could turn into 6-7 if you lose those rockets. Oh, heavy, heavy cafe push here coming in from FaZe, and Eco somehow dodges around it as long as he can. Bound is your last player alive yet again, as it was three dead for SSG. Two seconds till the rockets come up, and that's what I'm talking about with timing on the pushes. And FaZe have the shroud screen as well. Everything, the perfect mix of ingredients being put together here by FaZe to turn this game around. They're up by one, but now they're looking to extend this lead with the rockets in their hand. So well executed. They overload the cafe there. They catch SSG off guard. They get the three dead. As you said, shroud screen as well. That's going to be a perfect grab. And I love how disciplined Royal 2 is being with these rockets. Only a one kill lead, so they're going to make sure that they're not the first team to make the mistake. And with the one kill lead, it's now been taken away. As we see it tied up at 15. Oh, Royal 2 might be thinking about a triple kill. Might be thinking about opening the game back up and had to do so for FaZe because Space Station did a great job there of actually putting the pressure back onto FaZe. It's a great response from Space Station there. Even though FaZe had a one kill lead and the Rockets, they fly out in the end. It still stays just a one kill lead for FaZe. SSG answers back and responds very well. Really interesting to watch how both of these teams, all of the players want to take space on the map, aren't allowing themselves to turtle up, trying to make plays to create snowball opportunities for them. Snake right inside of the arcade, baiting and switching beautifully, but the damage also coming in from FaZe has made this a difficult situation now for Penguin. He knows he has to stay alive. He's got the Stalker. He's trying to cause some problems. A couple of laser beams being exchanged, both of them in different forms, but it will be FaZe who come out of this situation with still just a one kill lead. Yeah, so back and forth every single kill. It feels like it's worked for. The damage is done. They fly in to get the kill, and the opponents answer back. My goodness. Might have been two nades exploding one another there as Frosty gets the nade into B on Eco. That will be a momentary two kill lead here for FaZe. The pace of this game is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Both teams just trading back and forth, blow for blow, but nobody really landing the knockout blow as yet to establish that three, four kill difference. Maybe it is going to be that rocket launcher again coming up in around 15 seconds that could create that space between the two. It's also been just unbelievable performances from the last player alive each time to make sure the team doesn't get collapsed on and allow the next spawn kills to come in as well. The last player alive consistently for both sides, World 2 for example on your screen just now on C Balk, able to make sure that he's anchoring his team and keeps it a two kill game. Shroud screen again being picked up here by FaZe. The battle going down inside of the screen. It's going to be traded out between the two, but Royal 2 is going to come away with the Rockets. One kill the advantage again for FaZe. Very similar situation that we saw from them last time they got this power weapon. Can Royal 2 use them this time to really establish a commanding lead? Nice job there from Stellar. He takes a kind of a back angle there on A statue to make sure that he can't get rocketed on the tires, Jen. It's a really heads up play, really evolved play there from Stellar to make sure that doesn't catch him, but it's still a three kill lead for FaZe. But now you're starting to see the kills add up. Now you're seeing Bound as the last player alive for SSG, and that gap is starting to appear. Bound caught on the stairs. Frosty going to take him down after some good shots coming in from Royal 2. And look at his ability to just stay alive for a few seconds. Most players would have turned around and just said, hey, I know I'm dead in this situation. Absolutely. Just every single thing you can inch out. We talk about how Halo Infinite today is a game of inches. And I think the series this weekend have certainly been an indication of that. Our grand finals will be no exception. Oh, Stellar in a 1v1 as well. Takes that fight with Renegade. There's the trade again from Frosty. And Comes out of that situation again, not taking the beat down. Maybe if he took a beat down from Stella there, then all of a sudden, Eco gets that kill and there's that swing. That's how close teams are. That's how close it is to exchange kills and give yourself a lead. But for the first time in this game now, as we see it slow down, there's a six kill difference between the two teams. Oh my! And Frosty's a ghost! No way! Oh my god, Frosty in a 1v4. You thought he was going to be taken down by the angles on the back of the tram, but somehow hits the shroud screen for the back whack and almost lives to tell the tale. Game now a five kill lead for FaZe. And Royal 2 is on the flank. Royal 2 is doing damage, but even before he can finish the kills, who's picking him up? It's going to be Renegade, who keeps that little cushion in the side of the team who's dressed in red. For now, though, the game's going to slow down for just a second. Space Station keeping this one close. And you've got to say, the fact that FaZe have picked up pretty much every rocket launcher in the game so far, and it's only a five-kill game, says a lot about how good SSG have held on. It really does. You have to wonder if SSG starts to get power weapons and power-ups in this game, how different it might look. Rocket's popping right now. Oh, look at Bound as well. Bound is on the flank. Stella picks up another, and I said, hey, what's going to happen if SSG get a rocket launcher? We're going to find out right now. Bound picks that big weapon up, and now he has an opportunity to drag SSG back in these finishing moments. This was a six-kill lead. This was 36 to 30. Now it's 41 to 39. It's an incredible comeback, an incredible string of Plays from SSG. Bound oh, the snake! It's taken down there. It's good trade from Snake Bite. You always expect him to hit those. Now just a one kill game. Now tied up at 42 to 42. 42 42. SSG answered my question. What can you do if you get the weapon? What can you do if you get the rockets where you tie the game up? 
One kill now, the difference. A snake bite takes down Penguin, and all of a sudden, Eco makes the call. You can see, slow it down, boys. Slow it down. We can't afford to give much away. And off the back of them slowing it down, now the pace is going to be upped because the kills have been picked up. It's 44 to 44. Eco's on the flank. Renegade goes down as well. They have a one kill advantage. Wow, it's a perfect gradual tram push. And Penguin picked up the last one as well. It's perfect baiting and switching from SSG at the top of the tram stairs. That now gives them the two kill lead, and they only need four kills to close it out. What a performance from the man on your screen is leading in the kills department for Space Station Gaming. A man who's known for his support play, making those play calls while he's leading the way with the slays at the moment. 14 kills for Eco, 12 deaths alongside it. Stella gets another one as well. It's traded out, but just two to go now for SSG. Wow, this is dangerous territory Ooh, here. They, they know it's not over here. They know it's not over. 48, 46. Need to make sure they play this carefully. Only need two kills, but FaZe Clan looking to slow down this last push. Penguin's got that Stalker rifle as well, and that's a big problem here for FaZe, because anyone who pushes one bullet, two bullets, gonna shred away all the shields, and that damage might be the opening. Stella's gonna fly in and try and finish this game off, but FaZe retreat, FaZe back off, and somehow keep themselves alive. You saw Stellar had his foot on the trigger, ready to go. Instead, just stays alive and tires there. He might get taken down. 48, 46 still. Damage has been done. Stella's gonna go off the back of it. Penguin knows there's a player who's still alive in PD. But they can't close the game out until Bound decides it's time to hold the foot on the gas. Space Station win the Slayer. We're tied up at 1-1. Wow, well, and let's not forget, down 36 to 30 at the mid game. That was an incredible comeback, and you called it perfectly, Mark. What happens if SSG gets a rocket launcher? That was the question. It had been complete rocket launcher control from the phase side of the stage. As we take a look at some highlights, it started off here, and mainly tell you, in the back of Tram, you very rarely see just teams exchanging and flying into the back of the Tram, but the damage just came in each time, and the teams were evaluating. We need to push off this damage. There's enough. Even though we have to push across the map, we need to capitalize, and that was just back and forth tug of war the entire game. It's just crazy the confidence of players as well. Like, I call out this two one-shots to the back of the a, a Tram, and I'm last player alive. A lot of players have here. I'm last player alive. I need to survive. I need to get out of this situation. But if you're good enough and you're quick enough, you can turn it into a situation where instead of just staying alive and keeping one death and not picking up kills, you can put it to a plus one yeah. for your team if you play it well. Maybe even a plus two. And these players know that. They evaluate every single situation that they find themselves in. They know how efficient they have to be and that's how they judge. Is it a good time to go, or is it a good time to back off? Absolutely, you put it perfectly there. Every single play in Halo Infinite, at today's level and pace of play, every single play has a cost-benefit analysis on how much damage is done, am I the expected player to push in here and capitalize on the kills? And what we saw there was some of the highest level of Slayer play we've ever seen, where once the decision was made that the right amount of damage was done, that these teams and these players were going to fly in, they were going to capitalize. That's how that game stayed tied all the way to the 28 or so mark. In the end, a 36 to 30 lead, a lot of people would have been very comfortable placing their bets on a FaZe Clan win with a six kill lead on the home stretch. However, not SSG, a big rocket grab, a big set of plays from Bound also on the flank through A courtyard all the way into the L to help with that rocket grab was an absolutely pivotal moment as well and really good composure for them as well. You're gonna see after that game, Short break here for the players on the main stage gives us a chance to look at some stats as we get ready for some capture the flag. See uh, efficiency rate essentially, and this is something that was brought up a little bit earlier on in the previous days. And this is when you pull a flag, how many times is it going to go home? How many times are you going to convert? Well, look at the success rate for phase. Now we know they're a heavy slaying team, so it's usually that they're not going to pull a flag unless they feel fully comfortable that they are going to be able to convert it into a point. On the other side, SSGs is lower for sure, but I would say you are going to see more flag pulls coming out of SSG. They cause more to disruption, whereas FaZe are all about making sure it's the perfect scenario to execute. Absolutely. Also worth noting here on this third map, no surprise, both teams are undefeated in this specific game type here on CTF Empyrean. Both of them are 1-0 in this map, and of course, only one of them will maintain, uh, remain excuse me, undefeated after this next game three will be the go-ahead game in the series. And already, Mark, I'd say we're teed up for a pretty fantastic grand finals. We certainly are indeed. I mean, being tied up at one-to-one, -one, give me any... I mean, you ask me what game type though I want to see played between any of these amazing teams. It's always going to be Imperial and CTF because it is the real test of every single asset and every single facet of your team's ability, right? It's hitting big shots with sniper rifles. It's controlling different areas of the map at different time when different power-ups are popping. And then it's about execution, clutch kills on flag runs, making sure you're taking 
taking the right route. Everything that you could love to see as a Halo fan is really encapsulated on this game type. And when you've got eight of the best in the world, it's just a pleasure to watch. And to be the go-ahead game, you can place it better. Yeah, and you saw the players on your screen there. Big, big slaying numbers from both of them in capture the flag and no real surprise there. I think World 2 and Stellar actually are great examples of players that we talk about in their careers are playing some of the best Halo, both of them we've ever seen over the, over the course of their very long and illustrious careers, which is a special thing to say with how much those two have done. Yeah, it's really crazy to see the development of Stellar as well. I mean, we jokingly went back and watched our first cast together. Wasn't very good. Wouldn't recommend that you do it. Please, but, I mean, please don't watch please, it. Please don't watch it. But Stellar, he was a young kid at that time, wasn't yeah. he? You know, short hair, completely different look. And Almost now didn't recognize him. Yeah, exactly. Because I was that Stellar? I'm pretty sure that's Stellar. And then the lower third came. I was like, oh, okay, it's Stellar. <laughs> but I mean, from where he was then as like, you know, the, the Eco and Stella were always talked about as the next up-and-comers, right? It was always, oh, Eco and Stella are really good. You talked to Tox back in the day, and it was, oh, Eco and Stella are going to be the people who give us problems. Well, you know, they were right. It's as yeah. simple as that, and Stella has become uh, one of the best in the game, without a doubt. And I mean, right at the start of Halo Infinite, I think after the first event, I was like, made the bold statement. I was like, I believe at this point in the game that Stella is the best player in the game. And to be that consistent, to be in a grand finals for every single event up until now, apart, of course, from Charlotte, where they just managed to slip out, not many players can say they did that in their career. No, it's ridiculous. Absolutely not. Also, you just saw Elamite on screen. Big shout out to Elamite, of course. Well, the hard work with the SSG rosters last year, going through a lot of team changes, a lot of time to find their footing now, and now picking up this roster, of course, they have found some early success here in year number two, coming in with the first seed and now also finding themselves in the Grand Finals, looking to reclaim the throne that they've also often held in the Halo Championship Series. You can also see how good these teams are at stopping those flag runs when they do come in. And it's interesting to see you look at a phase and their efficiency. We're always saying, hey, they're really good at capping flags, which is moving well. Look at SSG. Look at their return rate. They are unbelievable at making clutch plays and prioritizing the right kills at the right time in order to send that flag back home. So those stats really do tell the story to indicate how close we expect this, not just this series to be, but every flag game time including the next one we're about to see. Yeah, that's a great rate of return there, 85%. If I can get an 85% return rate on anything, you know, I'm uh, going to be investing a lot of Space Station fans investing in their squad to see if they could take home this championship and the first championship for the org. Of course, in Halo Infinite, all four players on your screen here as they get ready for game number three. I want to talk a little bit about phase as well, because I think the phase have started to recognize, I, I want to give a lot of credit to one player in particular, uh, recognize what it's going to take to win a championship here. And I want to give a lot of credit to Frosty, because I think that Frosty has always been the guy. He's been him when we're talking about Halo players, right? And he's always the one making these crazy flashy plays. He's the one picking up snipes. He's leading the way. And, you know, he's always been left with the weapons to play with. Like, okay, Brad, you go do your thing. You win us the game. Well, now he's got a new teammate in Renegade. And I think the amount of respect that he has for Renegade's ability it's just kind of amplified by the way he's been playing in this tournament. He's taken a little bit more of a supporting role. Yeah. He is saying to Renegade, I believe you are the guy to go and win us games. I will be there if you drop those weapons or if I find myself in the vicinity to use them. But I think you are the man for us to go on and win a championship. You take that role, I'll be there to back you up. It's true. It's been amazing to see just how well that dynamic has worked between these players. I think when Renegade burst onto this roster, everyone's thinking, okay, there's a lot of power here, but what exactly is the dynamic going to be? Exactly how is this going to work when it comes to the bright lights on the championship Sunday main stage. So far, so good. We're tied one-to-one -one in our grand finals here heading into game number three. You call it Imperian, I still call it Pit. It's game number three and we're underway here. Tied up at one-to-one, -one. everything balanced perfectly in our grand final. Snakebite is going to pick up the first set of rockets here. Already fired one to try and get some trades going. Snake's, Snakebite is going to pick up a second onto Penguin, but both snipes also going to be picked up here. And I'm pretty sure that that's just been stolen away as Bound is being aggressive with the overshield. It's a great play for Penguin there. Not only is he flying into the court for a reason, he wants to eat that rocket so that the overshield can still be in play here for Bound. Oh. But it's a nice 2v1 from Frosty and Snakebite to take down Bound with the overshield that is neutralized. I mean, the confidence of Bound, you understand it. But Frosty's pretty good with this thing as well. He picks up one body shot. Stella's still inside a sword, though, being a problem. Now you're going to see after what is one of the craziest and fastest starts we've seen. A little bit of time here to reset. Both players. Still aware that they've got snipers to play with. Frosty picking up another one. Almost managed to slide past here as well. But Stella inside a sword is doing so much for his team at the moment, providing cover fire with that snipe. I mean, it looks just like the opening to the last game, right? Everyone piled in the back of the tram. This time, everyone's piled in the back of the sniper tower. You can just tell that this is high pressure, high pace Halo. Frosty having to stand still as well inside of the mauler. Stella knows he's here, and Frosty's going to have to leave. But this time, he's got a teammate to do it with as well. Stella can't quite connect. 
but Bounty's trying to push through the flag and cause some problems. Stella knows this. He's trying to do the damage and keep his life as effective as possible to help Bound out in this situation. Look at the kill feed. Bound's picked up one and somehow Bound is still alive, being a nuisance. Look at this delicate balance between Stella and Snake Bite. Snake Bite stays alive as long as he can, but eventually he's taken down there as four will die. The flag run begins. Now we've got to see if FaZe can stop the flag, but Renegade Ops spawn is going to have to do a lot of damage. He picks up one, but it's going to be exchanged immediately. The flag is almost down the long haul and will be all the way through. Bound turning into Mr. Object. The combination of Bound and Stella turns into a flat cap here for Space Station. They will strike first. And they do it under the two-minute mark as well. Very nice work from Space Station. And you could tell, once again, it's just like that last Slayer that we saw. This is slow and deliberate competitive Halo taking the time. Look at the delicate balance what we saw between Stella and Snakebite, right? Stella knows he needs to hold green. Snakebite doing whatever he can to buy time for his team. And slowly but surely, it's very methodical Halo from both sides. A very crazy tug of war that we've seen on each round of Slade rotations. Now, phase of one map control. That was four dead. Rockets are going to be coming up as well. Renegade going to be flanking through. Green gets the kill onto Stella. He was the problem. Eco doesn't check both ways when he crosses the road and gets hit by a snake. That's going to hurt for sure. And the Rockets do go over to Renegade and FaZe. But Space Station, having lost two, are able to fight on spawn here. The numbers aren't quite adding up here for FaZe. Three dead. Cross is your last player alive. Trying to put as much pressure as he can on here, but he'll have to wait for teammates off the spawn. Oh, Bound makes him pay as well. Just Frosty tried to switch that battle rifle to snap on with that headshot to close out that kill, but Bound too good in that scenario. Now Penguin's thinking about maybe stealing away a sniper. Maybe he's going to use it to hurt FaZe even more. Eco's there to support him, and I love what we're seeing from Space Station. This is a deliberate strategy. They are trying to steal the sniper away from FaZe. Look at this battle here. Royal 2 tries to stay alive as long as he can. Royal 2 buys the time. It's a good trade for Penguin. In the end, though, Royal 2 stays alive long enough to force that trade. You got to think Penguin might have been able to eke out a bit more if Royal 2 was not able to stay alive on that pit ramp. Interesting to look across the stats at the moment. It's Frosty who's leading the way for FaZe. 8-4 for him. Stella with the sniper rifle for the second time in this game, looking to add to his six kills. And I did say that, you know, it's a real standout, the fact that Stella has been given the responsibility to pick up the sniper rifle on this team when you've got the likes of Bound there, who can obviously do some pretty nutty stuff himself. But Stella pretty much holding off the FaZe push on his own at the moment. Oh. There's one. Converts that into a kill. Snake is going to have to wait for those shields to come back as the body shot is still probably ringing. Oh, and that's a nice kill. Stellar somehow stays alive as long as he can. And that flag will be stopped there on the first PR. It's going to be stopped. And look at this. I'm pretty sure the SSG might be thinking about running one themselves on the other side of the map. They're trying to run it through the courtyard. Renegade's going to slow it down. And now Snakebite, who was last player alive, has got some important work to do here. If he can hit this, then maybe there might be a chance for FaZe to counter Cappy out. PR Stellar puts him in the ground. Nice job there, as you said, finally go through the courtyard. 7.39 left on the clock here, still 1-0 in favor of SSG. Good time to get into a listen in here with FaZe Clan. I'm trying to, man. I will. Yeah, can we go high side now? Everything's good. Everything yeah, yeah, yeah. One shot green, one shot green, one shot green. Is there a second, second one? There's a second one, one shot in green. One shot in green. Lock on, lock on, lock on. I got him, I got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two dead. Rockets OV 20, guys. One shot, one shot. They're first, they're first, they're first shooting me. I got him. Nice, nice, nice. All right, everything in 15, guys. Everything in 15. Nice. Dude, three dead. Two dead, two dead. All right, let's rock it. Second, second. Everything in 10, guys. Everything in 10. Watch the watch, the watch. Trying to nade him out. Yeah, PJ's playing safe for rockets. Just one, two, there's one. I need to Insert PJ. I have to rat. Insert, insert me. Yes, you yeah, run away. I'm gonna die. Just two on three. 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 What a way to come out of that listening here as Bound is just absolutely dealing the damage and doing exactly what he needed to in this series. He's going to try to even run the flag over towards the tower. Not going to be easy to do here. Still 2v1 on the map. This man is a game changer. He makes things happen for SSG. But have FaZe done enough to just slow the momentum, to quell the flames that were just ignited from Bound with that overkill. Eco going to pick up two, keeping the pressure on. He might be able to get a touch on this flag. And it brought Bound to win! A triple kill from Eco that might turn into a second flag cap as well. Wow, if that doesn't sum up the slaying power on Space Station Gaming, what does? It's an overkill followed by a triple kill as well, and that will easily escort their second flag home. Eco's going to run it under the bridge downtown. And it's going to be Space Station who go up 2-0, to zero, and after the triple, 
I mean, Eco's got every right to pick up this sniper rifle. Guess what? It's early days here, early afternoon here on Championship Sunday, and Space Station says let's lock in for a long evening of a grand finals here as they lead 2-0 to zero in this third game, looking very strong. I mean, the, the game has been decided by big plays so far. First cap, Penguin causing so many problems and Bound staying alive, combining with Stella, but that was all about Bound blasting an opening through phase inside of the map and then eco following up as well but now eco's got some defensive work to do still plenty of time here for phase renegade just about stays alive and now eco has pressure he has to take down renegade he has to deal with frosty as well inside of the sword but he's played his life so well here oh my somehow they trade on the flag as well stays alive as you said that's too dead and eco so carefully plays his life how big is the body shot on renegade the fact that he hits that body shot on renegade on the plat so that he can swing around to the flag and easily clean that up that keeps things nice and calm for the space station side so interesting to see you always look at stats and you're like okay stats are cool you know eco's 10 and 10. if you were to say eco's had a 10 and 10 game it would not tell the story whatsoever but now phase have a chance to move that flag ssg are three in the death screen royal two's got to move that objective how about renegade as well once again he dies on the flag he flies right back into the flag he wants round two and that's what he gets he also gets a sniper rifle as a reward frosty should be able to grab the overshield on this escort home as well there are still two dead for ssg phase looking good on this run just gonna force this through they have the overshield they have everything they need that's another kill being picked up and if i know anything about phase if they can get this one home in the next five or six seconds they're not just thinking about the fact this is two to one they're thinking about going for a double yeah, that's right frosty wants to stay alive here as long as he can because they already have the double in mind almost does it though it's a very good prioritization of the s1 kill from ssg to shut down the hopes of a counter two to one then as we enter the last four minutes of this game plenty of time like i mentioned for FaZe to make this comeback, Snake by holding down green on his own at the moment. A human turret just firing away. Penguins disappeared off the map for some reason, or maybe exploded in a way we didn't expect. And maybe that's going to be the opening for FaZe to push forward. It's a great trade for Snake Bite. He's always going to trade there on the midbridge. Make sure to get that one. That was too dead for Space Station. Now 334 left on the clock. You got to wonder how heavy SSG will be with the pressure. Will they try to play a little bit of mid map, or will they just continue holding forward here as they continue to lead by one? Renegade's being a nuisance. Renegade's on the tower. Frosty picks up another one as well. Stella should be able to trade it out, but not without Frosty doing damage and allowing Snake by now to move through the training. Bound trying to shut him down, and it looks like it's a cool, a play call coming in here from Face to just slow down for a moment, wait for those respawners, hold mid map, and then we'll make our play. See what they can do here. Snake by can stay alive. Down here at Overshell, he has a lot of pressure on him, a lot of friends. He's making one of them. Trades out, however, that will now be SSG holding down bottom. Look at Bound. And the dance around the pillar, Frosty's gonna join him for a little bit of a tango, but both will fall over at just the wrong time. Three dead here for SSG. Renegade can't quite clean up that kill onto Penguin. A couple of frag grenades going down as well. Penguin just surviving for that long. I mean, talk to me about how important that is. Oh my goodness, Penguin's last player alive there in the back of the tower. If he dies, that very likely we see a very different composition here coming in from FaZe, but somehow just on the weapon switching, Renegade doesn't get what would have been an easy burst finish, and SSG holds a little bit more structure on the map. Bound. Poking on that tower, Renegade not quite connecting with that shot. 20 seconds till Rockets come up, 20 seconds till the Overshield come up. And with 2 minutes and 15 seconds left in this game, they have to go to FaZe if we want to see this tied up. SSG, if they get them, that could be game winning. How does FaZe time this? 10 seconds left, as you say. Not a lot of time to start getting some damage and some picks. Keep an eye on the kill feed, that'll determine where the weapons and the power-up goes. Stella just got two, somehow. Managed to pick up one, and then got that stick almost immediately to clear out the long haul side of things. Now the numbers were in the hands of SSG. Renegade is one of the last alive. He's being chased down by Bound. Bound doesn't oh! turn the right way. Maybe thinking about using the rockets here, just burning them. Manages to pick up one on his way down alongside Eco, giving him the help off the back of the assist. But that was a little bit of a scary moment there for Bound. Scary indeed. We'll see exactly where that overshield went as well. Eco's gonna stay alive here with the heat wave and Bound somehow stays alive and burns both rockets. Had he not, it could have been dangerous territory. Penguin's still with the sniper rifle. You hear off screen just taking faces. We know what he can do with it. If you watch the uh, most recent online tournament, you certainly will know that Penguin is no stranger to making plays when it really does matter. But Eco, he's got something that does work at a little bit closer range. And Snake Bite says, I see you, buddy. It's time for you to go and have a sleep. Nice little double kill here for Snake Bite. And man, has he been impressive. We talked about what he did in the Saturday of Charlotte. Man, Penguin's still hitting shots from the backfield as well, a battle of the snipers. But Snake Bite, an unbelievable weekend for him so far, but still. One or two series to close it out. Ooh, just got caught. Maybe screen watching for a second there. 
which allowed two players to sneak up. Penguin just holding his side of the map. And the good news here for SSG is this is all they really need to do, right? They have the lead. They have to hold on for 50 seconds. And Penguin is just saying, Shh, you shall not pass this sniper tower. That's right. Now, keep in mind, with the size of Empyrean here, with 44 seconds left, there is one, maximum two pushes left for the side of FaZe. Can they do it with 37 seconds left on the clock? Penguin's only got one sniper rifle bullet to play with here. So they do have to keep in mind that if they do make a push, and they are successful with it, it might be a way for FaZe to force their way into the base. One sniper bullet doesn't connect. Penguin and Stella now last alive, and FaZe are flooding through. Here comes the FaZe flood. As you said, it's a full green long haul push, and they get two kills. Can they continue the slaying? Stella's still alive, though. Stella slowing the progress down. Renegade will be taken down as well, and you have to wonder, with those kills, and certainly this one on Snakebite, if that's enough here for SSG to go up in this game. World 2 in no position. Royal 2 take it down. That'll be it as the time ticks down. The time ticks down, and SSG will close out game number three. They got up two to one in the series, but boy, was that close. Back down to the wire, and I, you have to think, SSG once again just playing the perfect slow timing on those caps. They know what they need to do. They're not flying through green and long and hoping that the kills come. They're sitting in green. They're sitting in long. They're seeing if they get the right damage on the first BR, on the plat, on the cuts, on the spawners. If they do, that's when they push. And as a result, the flag caps that they start often pay off. They get the two big ones on the board. As you saw in that game, it's not easy to do. And then they play with that advantage. They hold mid-map and they were able to do so for the final seven or so minutes of the game. I mean, one thing that's always fascinating when I love when we see examples of what we like to talk about, right? And adapting to the pace of the game, understanding where your advantages are. SSG at the start of that game were flying forward. You saw the clear game plan to try and steal the face sniper away, to get up onto their tower, to really put the pressure onto them. And it worked for them with two caps, right? They got that first cap on the board, bound went a little bit wacko mode and got that overkill. Eco follows it up with a triple himself for the second, but from then on, they recognize the situation of the game. It's like, hey, yeah. we got a two flag leave. Like, we don't make many mistakes. We don't have to push. We don't have to do anything wild. Penguin with that sniper rifle just sat on the tower and said, hey, FaZe, if you want to get in the base, you're going to have to go through me. And look what the difference maker was, right? A bound overkill followed by an eco triple kill just to get that flag to the mid bridge. You have to work and work and work against a team like FaZe and especially on a game type like Imperian CTF. But guess what? SSG was up to the task. No matter how many rounds of slays might have been required, they're able to get it on the board seven kills in a row as they run that flag home. And that was the difference maker. You have to get an overkill and a triple yeah. within about 30 pretty, seconds pretty of each tough. other <laughs> and to bring that flag home. It's not easily done. However, it will result in another win for SSG as they take the lead in the series two to one. Fascinating stuff. But we're talking about this series right now. Uh, FaZe Clan and Space Station. You can see the series score in front of you. It's two one, obviously, in the favor of SSG at this point. But this next game type is very interesting because neither team have played this yet in this tournament whatsoever. We have no record of how they played it with this lineup. Now, the interesting thing to point out with the oddball stats is that FaZe have been pretty damn good. And of course, we did see these two match up in an oddball game, not on this map, a little bit earlier where FaZe Clan clutched out such a close game. Yes, yeah, worth noting their overall oddball record as well. FaZe 3-0 in ball. Space Station gaming 1-2 and two in ball. And as you mentioned, receiving one of those from FaZe themselves. On your screen here, and a little bit of a 1.18 KD coming in for the face side, unsurprisingly, and a little bit of a negative side there based on the losses coming in for SSG. Yeah, but not too surprising to see it, right? Because we know that SSG likes to play a little bit scrappy. They're not too adverse to having these little transitional setups with two players alive. They'll hold on to that opal for an extra five, six, seven seconds to try and extend that lead. But if you're looking at two players who love this game type, you can see their KDs there. It's going to be bound and renegade. Surprise, surprise, leading the way in the numbers for their respective teams. Like you say, surprise, surprise, these two powerhouses are absolutely dominating across a multitude of game types. As we look at CTF specifically, Royal 2 is a big standout as well. 1.31 at Dallas and CTF coming into this series. As we look at also at Bound, like you saw earlier, 1.28 leading the side on the SSG in terms of overall slays in CTF specifically, but no precedent in terms of how that game type was played as we get ready for Oddball on Recharge. Now pressure back onto the shoulders of FaZe. Keep in mind in this grand final, they have a serious advantage. The last thing you want to be doing though, is thinking about that right now, this early into the series. But for SSG, it's a chance to go up by two games here, to have a 3-1 lead. And no, you just have to win one more to reset that bracket. That's right, I mean, how much pressure here on SSG to know that they need to do this quickly. As we talked about based on the series layout, nice kills there from Frosty, he's gonna get away with the camo as well. SSG knows they need to do this early, not let this series go the distance. Frosty with his camo being so effective as well. Doubles back so nicely. Just making sure that his position is gonna be 
so difficult to decipher and communicate for SSG and now probably thinking about throwing an oddball back to his teammates. But instead, the call is made, you push. You go and get some kills, Snakebite's gonna pick up two. And this camo's not been really had to be to use. Frosty's just been playing distraction. Nice job there to not only grab the shock, but also, of course, gonna grab that ball, start that rotating. Just hold down now for the pipe's angle as the team should be able to escort that on the gold hold and that's a nice big first pick as well. Certainly is. Eco might be thinking about and his take, head taken off as well in a few moments time but instead it's Bound who flies in to make sure the shock doesn't have too much of an effect. But look at this early hole coming in here from FaZe. Eco's going to be try, trying to break through on the gold stairs and manages to at least pick up one kill but the ball is already out of here. If they can pick up the kill on Penguin he's trying to cut off this angle then it'll be good news for FaZe but SSG are pinching. SSG are oh. collapsing and then Snakebite has last alive almost manages to take one down, but FaZe don't complete that rotation. SSG should be able to get some ball time. Snakebite does everything he can. World 2 actually wins a pretty big battle in tower as well. It won't slow down the grab for SSG, but it will at least set up FaZe for a little bit of an easier push here off the respawn. They're already in long haul. Space Station now holding that ball at pipes, and we have seen these two teams where they play this recharge oddball game type. It's not usually a case of a 30 second hold, a 40 second hold. They're both so efficient at breaking. It's usually five, six, 15 seconds at a time that you're going to see that score start to tick up a little bit. And Space Station, who did have that ball in their hands, now find themselves in the death screen. Three of them will fall, make it four, and FaZe now have a chance to get that ball in their hands. Frost is going to have it again. Really great dis discipline and management once again. Snake by staying alive as long as he could on the sneaky. He gets kind of a little bit of a play ball, but once again, buys enough time. Moments ago for Royal 2 to get that big win against Stellar. The all of that about 35 seconds ago paved the way for this current hold and all of those deaths. Renegade manages to get the kill onto Bound as well. No trade coming in, and that is the camo taken out of the hands of Space Station, and that's usually what you want to have if you want to break through a setup. And at the moment, Face Clan doubling up on the lead, and Renegade, he's going to pick up another. Two dead here for Space Station. Renegade wants more, taking a look at anyone he can see on the map. Pretty quickly knows that they must be in pipes. Yeah, but look at this rotate coming through. I mean, Bound wow. is going to be taken down as Frosty finds two. But it's such a good call on the rotate coming in from FaZe. Efficiency, something we always talk about in objective game types. And FaZe has been a little bit guilty, maybe, not being the most efficient over slain. But in this circumstance, they get that ball out of pipes. They run it towards Elevator, and they make SSG have to change their plan. And really, it comes off of what we've been talking about this entire time, just continued slaying dominance. And when you see Bound just flying out of Whirlpool. Eventually, it's three dead for FaZe, but not before they go up 43 to 16. Things will slow down with a momentary 3v3. We'll see if Space Station can hold here. Need to hold. If they can, then maybe this game is going to be pretty close to being tied up around that 43-point mark that FaZe have managed to put on the board. For now, it's about holding the crosses. It's about doing damage and making sure you're not first picked, and Penguin is going to be first picked. Trades come in, but Bound now is going to be flooded by three. Space Station, again, cannot hold, and FaZe are breaking very comfortably. It's a very good FaZe push. Teammates coming in there, but luckily Frosty will live to tell the tale. Going to just maybe think about rotating here based on how heavy the pressure is on gold. I mean, what's surprising to me, I, I mentioned how Frosty has been willing to adapt his role on this team, do what it takes to win. He's got the most objective time on the team at the moment. He's been the one going for that odd ball, wrecking the situation as quickly as possible, and now he finds himself as last alive. Let's see what he can do as a solo if he takes down Penguin. He'll be huge as the solo player in a 1v4, and now he's just flying around doing even more damage. This is beautiful. This is all you could ask for, even more than you could ask for for your last player alive. I mean, he's done everything you want him to do. Bound now trying to stay alive and trying to be a problem on the batteries for him, but Frosty, like you say, as last alive buys time for FaZe. That means that SSG don't get the ball. It means that they don't close that gap. It's around 19 points the difference, and maybe now now you're going to see SSG a little bit more comfortable with this hold. Three will fall from FaZe Clan. Penguin has the camo and Frosty's last alive. Even though it was a great effort from Frosty in the end, slow and steady Space Station Gaming climbing back into this game. Now they're only down by eight and with camo in hand as well. Royal 2 versus Penguin. Oh, Renegade! He announces himself to that fight as well, and Penguin probably thought, I've got a guaranteed kill here. But that's how good the communication is looking for FaZe. However, SSG tie the game up. They now go into a lead with 50 points. How many times have we seen that from Renegade? There's someone at top goal, and somehow off-screen, Renegade is shooting from that angle. He picks up another one as well. All this carnage is going down. Bounce running away with that odd ball. That's what you need to do. Out-rotate FaZe. And at the moment, SSG are doing it. Snake bite breaks through, though. Two dead for SSG. And once again, back and forth here. FaZe right now outslaying 34-29 overall, but this game is still Still so, so close. Kills being traded out. Two dead each side. Pace of the game starting to pick up once more. Nobody getting away with no shields. Killing spree here for Bound. He's 8-8 eight and eight in this game, but heating up at just the right time. SSG have turned this game on their head now. 
64 points and rising with an elevated setup and all the phase trapped over a gold. It's been amazing to see this entire series. Truly, every single kill, every single push is so calculated. The only time the teams are pushing are if they have that mathematical, that risk has been assessed and they're pushing in on that advantage. But the, as you say, the kills are traded out constantly here in the back of Elevator. Big help coming in from Eco on bound. I mean, every time you're seeing a 1v1 at the moment, the help is arriving. But phase are flying through. Royal 2 gets the trade. 2v2 on the map right now. Frosty needs to do something for FaZe if they want to break through. Snakebite's going to be there to assist him. Snakebite will be able to grab that ball, but here comes more pressure. This time it's from Stella. He gets the kill as well. Penguin will pick up another, and SSG will hold the elevator. And finally, on the timing push, we finally don't have another player from FaZe pushing in here as we take a look at that camo popping right now. Camo going to be popping up, and the kills that were picked up by SSG may allow Penguin to move in and pick it up. However, Renegade, more than aware of the situation, he finds the kill. Camo's going to be taken down as well. You saw Frosty had got that into his hands. Phase now on the precipice of not a very good situation. Renegade has to make a play, and at least he's got the camo to do so. But look at this route coming in from Stella. He's trying to escape back to Spawners, but Renegade cuts him down. Not over just yet. Big responsibility here for Renegade, though. They have three dead. Ego's your last player in long haul, and now only three points away for Space Station Gaming. This has to be a perfect hold here from Phase. Phase get that ball in their hands. Eco's still alive somehow, and Eco somehow gets a kill. So pressure now. Oh, boy. Renegade doesn't get the back smack, but does get the kill. Unfortunately for him, he's going to have to go a little bit Super Saiyan here because multiple players have fallen on his team. He'll pick up one. He gets another one onto bound for Penguin. Penguin. He's out of here with that off ball. And SSG will close out round number one. Face had a chance there at the end, but SSG holds strong. They did. Penguin just sneaks away with that ball over to the stairs, and you won't believe this, but the comeback there was incredible. SSG was being outslayed 21 to 11 earlier in that round, and they somehow come back and win the round of ball. An unbelievable comeback. It took them quite some time, just over three minutes total of play to bring that essentially slay total to a tie, and in the end, even win the round and sneaking that one out. The ability to stay in the rounds for SSG is something that we're certainly going to keep our eyes on. Never out of it. It's almost like it's the only team you're kind of looking at, and you're not paying too much attention to the Slays. If they're being slightly outslayed, they're usually winning objective game type still. And you can see Penguin, he's got the first camo in this second round. Can he put it to use? That's the question here. You got to think FaZe with a lot to think about after that first round. And stick. Nice job here from Renegade. Comes in, forces the trade on the camo. That will certainly be... A win and a trade he's happy to have overall as the control for pipes and gold will continue. And man, FaZe, you thought they were going to run away with that round. Certainly had the slaying advantage throughout its entirety. But Space Station just finding a way at the end to make sure to have a huge, huge hold there to close out the round. Snake right now moving around with this green gun. Should be able to maybe turn two here. Switches away, Ooh. but just gave the opportunity for the two bursts to come in. Followed by that beatdown from Eco. And we always talk about how this game is a game of inches. Even in indivi individual battles, you can see it there. Three dead there for FaZe. This will be time now on the board for Space Station. Really our first hold of this second round. World 2 is going to spawn up, which means all eight players on the map. Let's see how well Space Station can hold here. Rotate thinking about maybe a little bit of a gold pressure. Yeah, you're going to see Space Station looking for kills. Where do they fall? If they do pick up the first one or two, that up will be moved to where that action happened. At the moment, though, Eco's going to be pushing in on Royal 2. Royal 2 loves a trade. He loves going plus one even more, taking Eco down. Wow, you think Eco definitely expected to get the trade there. As a result, it's three dead balls not really played. I believe still top gold here. It's also going to be a free shock rifle for Royal 2, which spells danger for Space Station Gaming. Certainly does indeed. Penguin does get the first kill, but look at the info. And look at the push coming in from SSG. They do not let Royal 2 get too comfortable with that shock rifle in his hands. Talk about that pressure. Eco, your last player alive, man. Seller just flies into Whirlpool, but FaZe answers back on that pressure to make sure that it's a 2v4 trade and it's perfectly timed here as Frosty's also going to have camo grapple. Gets the information as well where the spawn's coming in. Might have been tickled just a little bit by that frag grenade to drop the shields, but nothing too much to worry about here. Play coming in from Penguin. He's just behind enemy lines here. Can they get that kill? Penguin going to be baited in. Has no idea that Frosty is here. But here comes the flood again from SSG. They get two. The ball is now going to have to be potentially played by FaZe. But SSG keep it in pipes. They pick up the kills and Renegade is now last alive. Well, they might even have caught the ball off of the bat ledge because there was certainly a play ball opportunity there. However, Space Station makes sure that the ball stays comfortable in the pipes and they will continue scoring. Mark, you talked to earlier about how Space Station is a team that even if they're being outslayed can win objectively game types time and time again. They're still being outslayed by three, but they're leading in round two as well. Gotta say, a little bit surprising, a little bit disappointing maybe to see FaZe wilt that easily with that hold. Frosty has the camo, they have the opal, they have fullback control. Shock as well. And shock, like you say, and somehow or other, 
SSG have managed to find a way to break through the setup. Certainly a miscommunication, maybe. Maybe someone just losing an important individual battle, but I'm not worried about that Opal too much for now until we see where those spawns are coming in. And now you're seeing a little smart rotate moving towards the spawners. And the great thing here for SSG is if he could get it to the back of blue, there might have been a playable opportunity. Interesting note, I think Baum was actually looking for the slide to see stairs. He doesn't hit the slide, so he had to actually go into a repulsor tunnel, which would have provided these angles there for FaZe. I think he wanted to take a little bit of a different route. FaZe now going to have the ball all the way outside here on Sword Platform. Yeah, really smart position here from Snake Bite as well, even though he's kind of in a difficult position. He gets the play ball. Most importantly, you know, he's not just facing away from where the action is happening. He's still involved, and you can see why that was important. Picked up one kill, did damage to another, slows down SSG once more. Oppo is going to be reset, but now all eyes on the camouflage drop him. Bottom middle. Ooh, this is a big kill here. Renegade takes no damage as well. He'll have the shock on Battle Edge, which will provide an opportunity for FaZe to try to get back in this. It is worth noting how low scoring this round is, specifically very different from our first round, with only 139 left. Just 26 to 17. It's still a nine-point round. Trade after trade after trade. FaZe not being able to get the oddball in their hands quite yet, but they do have the kills to go alongside it. There's three dead now, and Snakebite is going to say to Renegade, you do your job, which is to kill Stella right now with a shock rifle, but Stella again has lost a life. First spawner gets into a position to make this uncomfortable for FaZe. Ball is down. Still that six point difference between the two teams. World 2 with a big win there. It will eventually be traded out. However, Snakebite needs to pick up this one, and he will, unsurprisingly. Two dead for both sides. Let's see how Snakebite holds here at back. See, might just play it. He does indeed. Makes a safe play. Now it's just a five point round with one minute left. I mean, it's a really smart play from Snakebite there. He'll get a trade at the end of it as well. But the reason that he decided to play ball there is because he realized where his teammate had spawned right across the map over at gold. And if he gives away that odd ball and SSG managed to keep it on the map, it's pretty much gifting a setup over to Space Station, but just to go back to your point, look how close it still is. Still five points left, and there's uh, five points, excuse me, between the two teams, and there's only 42 seconds between the two squads. FaZe can get four dead there with FaZe. They should have a ball grab, they do. And there's also a spawner here on back Ellie. Maybe even some split spawns based on the damage that came in. Yes, they will split spawn as well. A few players here at gold. 30 seconds left on the clock, and it's just a five point round. Five point round, but two kills going over to FaZe. Royal 2 with a big double kill as well. And SSG find themselves four in the death screen. The timing of the push perfect. And with that push, with those kills, FaZe Clan turn this one around. They go into a lead. And what a time to do it exactly when they needed to strike. Now they're up by just one. 20 seconds left. The next kills will decide this round. Camo coming up. Problem is, I don't think SSG have time to worry about it. Trades coming in. Royal 2 taking a flank. Snake bites out of there. Nobody close apart from Bound to really get that old ball out of their hands. Snake bite going to be forced to play ball. But here come SSG. Maybe they're thinking we do have time. Eco gets the pick up, but the positioning from Royal 2 here is exceptional. He picks up two. Penguin, he gets taken down as well. Royal 2 just saves the round here for FaZe. What a play there from Snake bite. When he was top gold, you were wondering what he might do. Is he going to hold the ball? Is he going to rotate? Maybe go long haul. Instead, takes the ball, plays it all the way, not just to batteries, but to bottom middle. It forces SSG to just dogpile onto the ball. Stellar can't wrap the corner. It's a great round here. We're right into our final sudden death, third round here of Oddball. You love how close this series is. It's a pleasure to watch these two teams whenever they do go against each other. Fierce rivals. Neither wanting to give an inch whatsoever. 1-1 one, one in this game. This is, like you say, the deciding round. I mean, what a difference that round was, right? It was so close between the two teams. Just two or three points. It comes down to one or two right at the end. And Royal 2 is pretty good when he goes up against camo players from that ledge. Royal 2 knows that angle. I think Stellar knows that angle as well. If you've watched any Halo over the past year, you know that angle. You know exactly what we're talking about. A few players have found themselves victim to that angle. But I got to tell you right now, guess what? FaZe still slapping up in the Slayer department. They're now out slaying 100 to 91. Can they continue it on here? Three dead. Royal 2, your only player alive. That will lead to early time for Space Station. I mean, every player on FaZe Clan putting up a huge amount of kills at the moment. Royal 2 is leading the way, and a lot of those came in those clutch moments at the end of that game. And I love the decision making, just as we see a, a SSG with this hold inside a pipe. Just to take a second, you know, he knows Camo's coming up. He knows where the push is coming from from SSG in that last round. So it makes a little bit of a risky play to just rotate towards C-plat and get those angles to do the damage. It's one that can either win you a game or lose you a game, but for now, it's going to be plays coming in from Eco that he's looking to turn into game-winning ones. That was four dead yet again for FaZe. Space Station still holding in gold. They're going to drop for the bound hole. A good time at the 30 mark to go into a listen-in with Space Station Gaming. Okay, okay. Apple, 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 Apple,
Top red, top red, I think. Half one shot. Watch out, watch out, pipe, 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 Stay with Tapple, stay with, or Frosty Tapple, Frosty Tapple, going yeah, pipes, yeah. going pipes. Yeah, and top A. Just let me, let me, let me. I'm, I'm gonna get ball, I'm gonna get ball. Frosty's on you, Bound, Frosty's on you, Bound. I think we need kills, I think we need kills, guys. I'm fine, I'm just getting the ball out. Wait, 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 I, I can get ball, I can get ball all the way to blue. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Top cat now, on me. I have your, I have your help, I have your help, Raiden. I need it, I need it. Just top cat, bro, too. Watch your top cat, bottom tower, bottom tower, Three dead, three dead, renegade, renegade, renegade. He's on me, see, he's on me. He's see, he's see, he's see. You guys gotta push it out now. Push it out now. Push it out now. Fuck the bomb. Push it out. Watch out, John. Watch out. Watch out. Might be glass braided. Might be glass braided. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bottom B. Alright. Hold red. Hold red. Hold red. Yo, on you guys. No bottom B. Bottom B. Right here. Right here. Right here. Braided. C stairs. Yo, Adam. You can stay back silo. We can melt. Remember one guy. One guy. Back silo. Back silo. On the jump. On the jump. I played it. Go red. Go red. Go red. Go red. Go red. Yeah, he's on the silo. On silo jump. Silo jump. Silo jump. Long cut. Now they're listening back into the gameplay. It's SSG who have commanded a lead here. One of the biggest we've seen so far in this game, this round number three. Yeah, phase holds off pretty well, right? When we got to that listening, it was 30 to zero. So not really a lot of time lost. However, a lot of time lost on the clock. By the way, through all of this, the slaying difference has slowed down just a bit. Now it's a six kill lead here for phase, but phase is still out slaying, but it's not translating the points on the board. And this is something we've always questioned, right? With this phase lineup, a lot of slaying potential. Are you turning it into wins in games? Are you picking up the oddball? Are you getting the plays? This kill was in the right place hey! well. Stella, he's going to put two in the death screen with that push. Royal 2 not being able to convert on those kills, and they're the important ones. They're the ones that matter. They really are, and those are also the kills that you expect every single player on phase to convert there. Just a little bit of tough target tracking when you got multiple players coming. Oh! oh! Killing spree for Stellar with the shock as well. They will continue to hold here 61 to 21 in your third round. And the great thing for SSG here is they're picking up these kills. They're looking really strong, but they don't have to worry about ball time too much right now. FaZe have to continually think we need this up ball in our hands. Yeah, yeah well, look at this one. double nade there from Eco. Just great pre nades coming into tower. We'll shut down Renegade, which is exactly what you need to do. Eventually, two will fall for Space Station. Is this the opening and the opportunity for FaZe to bounce back? We talk about Eco's decision making there. He knew he was getting a shock rifle player was trying to kill him, but also recognized that the most important kill on the map was Frosty. So completely disregarded the first and tried to concentrate on a second. Didn't quite work in the way that maybe he would have wanted with the kills going their way, but FaZe starting to look a little bit desperate here. You can see they're forcing fights, they're flooding in. Renegade picking up one and Royal 2 with that ball in his hands. Maybe there's an opportunity, but a big 1v1 to be won here by Renegade. Yeah, Penguin was your last player alive. Bound was a spawner, and Penguin somehow wisely stays alive. Just gonna wrap around and hope for the health to come. All four, all eight, excuse me, players up. Let's see what kind of damage he could do for the opener. Oh, has Penguin got the time in here? Royal 2's got no shields. Flies wow. through, he does get the time in. Frosty now in a 1v1. Penguin! Whoa! Smashes through the face setup. We said, what can he do for the opener? How's that? Three dead for FaZe. He's your last player alive. He takes a beautiful route from Stax to the Mangler door, and he gets underneath the FaZe radar. I mean, FaZe just lost track of him. It's as simple as that, like you say. Not showing up in their radar whatsoever. He gets through Royal 2, gets picked off. He wins a massive 1v1 engagement. And then he gets that ball out and causes some more problems. SSG, those kind of players are going to win your games. Exactly, those are round winning plays coming out of Penguin. What more can you ask for? Last player alive, he takes a hell of a route to pick up a double kill and blow the setup wide open. However, it's once again two dead for SSG, maybe three dead in a moment. Can FaZe turn this into more points? They're down by 50. It's starting to look a little bit desperate here for FaZe. They need to get the ball in their hands, but just a reminder, if you missed the winner's bracket final, one of the rounds between these two teams ended 100 to 99, so that's how close it can be. And there is no doubt in my mind that FaZe can turn this on its head. Yeah, they've got a lot of time actually as well. 135 on the clock. Of course, the clock will stop whenever the ball is held. So still a lot of time to play with here. However, minor man advantage. It's a two man advantage now for SSG. It's gonna be three oh, as Eco boy. picks up another one. Frosty last alive. Old ball is in a position as well where SSG can pick this one up and let me tell you, if they play this one right, then we might have to start thinking about having a long evening here in Dallas. Oh, I think we already are. And you know that Stellar's thinking about the same thing. It's another killing spree for Stellar. We've lost track, to be honest, at this point. And now, just like that, SSG goes into the slaying lead as well for the first time across three rounds. Two dead here for FaZe Clan SSG. Penguin with the ball in his hands and he's going to see a victory screen on his monitor as well. SSG! will win Recharge Oddball one more game
and we reset the bracket. Wow, as you said, what a series it's been so far, setting us up for a long evening here at DreamHack Dallas, and we would love nothing more than to see this go the distance. As you see, a lot of games already under the belt of these players are going to take a minor break here on the main stage, but what a poetic match to watch from our stat screen on set. The entire game, phase leading anywhere between 5 and 11 slays, even while losing each round. Space Station is winning out Slay. In the final moments of our third round, they will end the game out slaying phase 132 wow. to 131. Wow, that is a crazy turnaround coming from SSG. And a lot of that was down to Stella and Penguin, I feel, in those final moments. I mean, we always talk about, you know, kills are great. Kills are fantastic. You need kills in Halo to do anything, right? But it's the pivotal ones. It's the important ones that completely change the complexion of what you expect to see happen next. Penguin staying alive, bottom middle, sneaking through to the Mangler door and getting that double kill. That won them the game. It's as simple as that. And if you face, it's a miscommunication. You're going, how did we not think about Penguin where he was? Also, how about Penguin being the one that grabbed the ball at batteries right when they took their eye off the ball as well? He won that round as well. So late game plays from Penguin secure both of the rounds for SSG. But I couldn't agree more. That is going to be a moment regardless of what happens in this tournament. That was such a pivotal moment that FaZe will be watching the VOD on that. They're going to be watching all four players' POVs and thinking, how did we allow a player whose bottom stacks... Here's the play right on your screen. How do we allow a single player player to come through, kill our carrier, and then win another 1v1 and back elevator Ooh. to shut down any hopes of a hold. I mean, you saw as well that Frosty got first shot in that battle. Frosty was full shields and Frosty, he just got turned on. I mean, Penguin was perfect in that fight. And usually you would expect Frosty to be able to convert on that situation. But if you're phased, you're kind of like, like, whose responsibility was that? Well, it's all of your responsibility. Everybody has to be tracking, right? Where is Penguin, his last player alive? Who saw him last? What can we expect to see? And who isn't watching bottom elevator? Absolutely, you have to think in the columns, there needs to be something, and you hear it from the best teams during listenings. There are call outs like, we have lost track of one, right? We're losing one, we don't know where one player is. And especially though, Penguin, your last player alive. It's, it's an example of that needed to be prioritized, and maybe they just didn't think he would get to Mangler Door as fast as he did. However, he got there, and boy, did he ever make the most of it. He certainly did indeed. Now, questions to be asked of FaZe Clan. They've had some really tough series so far in this tournament, of course, and we're going to talk about Slayers and we're going to talk about games that are going to be coming up in just a few moments. I mean, you're looking at KDs, you're looking at damage stats that are coming in on your screen right now, but I want to talk about how, you know, in that first series, it was, uh, it was FaZe and it went to a game five, and FaZe have been involved in many game fives, and even though they're down at the moment in this series three to one, they are good at sending series long. They are never checked out of a series. They are always in a position to turn it on its head, and who knows? Even though in our grand finals, we're not going to see a game five because we got a best of seven here. It's going to be an opportunity maybe for FaZe to keep that in the front of their mind that they've been here before and yep. they can turn a series on his head. And let's not forget, this game was close until the late game, right? If you didn't happen to catch this version of Aquarius Slayer when these two teams played this earlier this weekend, this game ended 50-38. That's a blowout victory at this level of professional Halo. However, that game was close up until the 30 mark, and it was FaZe that found really great late game composure that they lacked in the last game that we just saw. We'll have to see if they can repeat on Aquarius Slayer. And of course, we mentioned this previously when we were talking about Slayer game types. Oh, is it going to be unbound. You see his KD on that, on that previous game, I think it was 0.39, which was a very, very low KD for a player like Bound in such an important Slayer game that could decide a series. Well, he's got an opportunity to decide a series here. If he puts in a massive performance on this game type, adjusts what he was doing and somehow puts those stats a little bit closer to zero, then maybe we're going to see a bracket reset here and SSG are going to force FaZe to go again. And you also have to think on the side of Bound. Bound led that game in kills, 37 and 32 across all three rounds. Bound is on firing on all cylinders. He's leading the entire lobby in slays. And if he can bring that last game slay energy into this one, they're going to fare pretty well in the Aquarius Slayer. They certainly are indeed. Another thing to keep an eye on is camo control. I mean... You saw what Trippy did with it for Optic yesterday. Absolutely nuts. Like he got five in a row and ended up putting up 21, 22 kills in that Slayer game on Aquarius. It is so vital that if you aren't in a position to get it, you're contesting it, hunting that player down before he can get away and really cause some problems. And another thing that's being controlled extremely well is the Heat Wave. I think it's something that really isn't kind of talked about enough on Aquarius Slayer. A Heat Wave player can dominate one side of the map on his own. Right, especially with the things that we're seeing in this series, right? Players are able to hit wild movement into 1v2s that they have no business winning. Let's look at what Penguin just did in that last game. You give any of the players that are in that scenario as last player alive a heat wave, they could totally turn down what is otherwise a big advantage for the other side. They can slow that down, even get 1v2s out of it, and make sure that they set their team up for success off of the spawn and maybe even maintain map control. Yeah, it's so fascinating, this series. And 
you got to think about FaZe right now. They're probably thinking, you know, how are we in this position? How are we in this position? But at the same time, someone's got to say, hey, we played these guys before on it and we smashed them when we, when we matched up on this exact game type. So it's a real kind of dichotomy of what is going through the minds of FaZe right now. How do you pull yourself out of, you know, a couple of back-to-back -back map losses and try and flip the mentality back to, hey, we beat these guys. There's no reason this series isn't going to keep going. Absolutely. That's what they have to remind themselves. And a long evening here is what Space Station is ready for and already leading in this series by quite a margin. Only one game away now from sending us to a grand finals reset. Big, big numbers coming out of that third uh, three rounds of oddball. You have to think that's a lengthy oddball, right? That's an ex it's starting to get now deep into the series. And I think a lot of stamina is going to come into play. Let's not forget, FaZe coming in the way that they did. They've had less games overall under their belt. SSG coming into the series pretty hot. Yeah, they certainly are. And something I just noticed there is you can see the players are getting ready to get into this game. The cheeky little smile coming in from Kevin Smith. Now, usually, Eco is all business. But you can kind of sometimes get a little bit of an indication of how SSG are feeling if you keep your eyes on him through the... Uh, We'll say the pre-game chats and lobbies and just the corner of the mouth turned upwards there. There was a little smile on his face and that gives an indication that SSG are feeling it right now. They want to get into this game. They want to close this series out and give themselves a real opportunity at becoming champions here in Dallas. Yeah, you mentioned Eco there. 1.05 and Slayers overall doing pretty well and making sure to stay positive throughout the game so far. As we look across to the phase side in the Slayers, there's, there's some standouts unsurprisingly. Renegade right now overall 1.21 in Slayers, not far behind. It's Royal 2 on a 1.20. Yeah, no surprise to see those names positive, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I, think they've all, I think they've been positive since birth. Yeah, exactly. I think Royal 2, a lot of people would say probably the best KD player in the history of Halo. You know, he, the man does not go negative, and if he does, Trust me, he will make some excuses as to why that happened. But it's uh, up to FaZe now to, to deal with this, to put themselves in this situation. They've been in this situation a couple of times. They've already pulled off one reverse sweep at this tournament, and now they're going to have to find a way to find form, turn this series back on his head, and ask questions again of Space Station. It's Aquarius Slayer. This is a game type we have seen already between these two teams at this tournament. FaZe took it this time. If Space Station can, we are resetting the bracket. That's right. We'll see FaZe once again. A little bit of confidence, maybe in the back of their mind. The fact that they won this game 50 to 38 when they last played State, Space Station. Maybe just that extra boost, maybe the little bit of mental fortitude they need to make sure that they have the stamina, the endurance to take this series the distance. But in order to get there, they will need to take this do or die Slayer before they get into our next series. They want to send this first one the distance if they can. Not going to be easy though, Space Station looking hot. They certainly are indeed. Uh, we're going to get into this game as soon as we can, of course. We'd like to just build the tension for a few extra seconds. But uh, I think everyone who's watching this at home at the moment, there's kind of an extra level of interest, right? Coming into this tournament, the talk was all about Optic Gaming. Can you pull off the 4P? And I would say if we didn't have that phase invitational online, that probably would have been the story, right? Yeah. Because Optic was still the team to beat. They were still the one who were winning the majority of the online tournaments. But there was a lot of discussion about, you know, should Optic have been third seed coming into this tournament? Well. You're looking at how the results have gone in the tournament and everything has kind of worked out in the way that the form would suggest from the online tournaments. And SSG really did throw a spanner in the works, you know. And I say that because it's crazy to say, you know, these guys are probably the most consistent team in the entirety of Halo Infinite, only missing out in the grand finals once. But SSG just reminded everyone, it's like, all this talk of Optic and Phase, all this talk yep. of Optic and Phase. What about us? We're pretty damn good as well. Yeah, like you said, I think the timing of that Phase Invitational qualifier was perfect for SSG, because I think, like you said, the story was all about Optic and FaZe coming out of Charlotte. And rightfully so, it was one of the best grand finals we have ever seen, not just in Halo Infinite, but in competitive Halo history. It was unforgettable, and that took the story in the community. It's all about Optic FaZe. Can FaZe take down Optic? And SSG is thinking, I don't think people remember what we've done in this game, and even before this game, they're very happy to be where they are. They earned their first seed in an unbelievable online tournament run. They've done the same here with incredible sets of play, and they've continued that on in our grand finals as they lead 3-1. to one. It's almost like Optic and FaZe fans were arguing with each other, and Space Nation fans were kind of uh, trying to yeah. put their hand up in the middle of it. It's like, yeah. uh, guys, guys, can you, we, have, we, we won a few as well, but we'll have to find out if SSG are going to have to continue and refine that form again. As we go back into our grand finals now, they need one more map to reset the bracket of FaZe, who have already won this game type, looking to keep it going long. Man, and how much pressure here on this Aquarius Slayer for the side of FaZe? They need to know that early on, they cannot be the ones making mistakes. They need to place a fantastic Halo Snakebite somehow stays alive in a 1v1 against Stellar. Take his time here to get the shields back as well, because two players have already picked up kills, and the first camo, speaking of pickups, is going to go into the hands of Frosty. Now,
Frosty, last time these two teams met up, he had a huge amount of assists, led the way for his team. And this time, with the camo in his hands, maybe he's going to assume the role of being the one to pick up the kills. We talk about how FaZe plays the best under the most pressure. We've talked about that this weekend already, and we've seen that be the case even in a Slayer. Also, on Slayer Aquarius, you remember, we saw them play some of their most disciplined play Halo excuse me, they've ever played against a few lower-seeded teams. We saw that bring out the best in FaZe, and you got to think with everything on the line, that's how they're going to play here in this game five as well. Look at how elusive SSG appeared right now. Frosty's done so much damage, but no kills have been picked up. Camo has now disappeared. That's not going to be effective on the map. And now he has the heat wave to play with. So if you're looking at power on the map, it's all in the hands of FaZe. They got that first camo. It's only a one kill lead off the back of it, though. And this is something we saw in the first layer, right? Early camo control, early power up control, going over to FaZe. But it was SSG who came out with a win in the end. You could just tell how much pressure. Oh, my what? goodness. Frosty connecting from distance with the heat wave. Going to get another one as well. Make that a double oh, kill. He's got more on the screen. up for him. It's a triple kill here for Frosty as he shows how effective that that heat wave could be in the back of the base. And we said the game was close. Well, Frosty just blown it open. Yeah, FaZe starting to just pull away here. It's an early three, three kill lead for FaZe as they start to put the points on the board. Three kills. The difference between the two. And this is where you want to kind of keep it if you're on the lower side of that scoreline. But Snakebite and Royal 2 are going to combine. And the four kill difference is a massive one. We do see big swings. We talk about it on Aquarius Slayer. But at the moment, the kill feed is only painted in one color, and that's red. And oftentimes, you see Aquarius Slayer can be a relentless, just pr high pressure game type. This is looking a little bit different. You can tell how much is riding on this Slayer because it's a lot more calculated on the pushes. It looks so different from that game number one where they're flying at each other. Here, instead, we're seeing a lot more timing pushes, a lot more calculation going into the movement around the map. Well, at the moment, Snakebite's looking for the call out on P1. Unfortunately, Stella's managed to evade him. Stella will be taken down by Frosty, so finally they do find out where B went, and Frosty's going to turn a single kill into a double. It's 20 to 16. A dangerous-looking lead starting to pick up here for FaZe, and Frosty, well... You're not going to be able to see him for a few more moments. Oh, look at this play from Frosty as well. Just slowly moving around the map. Not shooting just yet. Just a few pings going down for the info. A 3v3 on the map as he pushes into blue. I mean, cue the Jaws music as he walks in. Picks up one on Stella. Bound trapped on the fridge as well. Damage being done on those stairs. The pink stairs. But Frosty's going to get spied out. He doesn't get the trade. And Bound and SSG bait him in beautifully. Depending on how the score goes from here, that could be a moment that we reference back to because that was a big opportunity for FaZe and somehow shut down for SSG. However, FaZe continues to convert and they pick up the heat wave off the kills and now a seven kill lead, 25 to 18. Even though it was the camo player who went down, the opportunity was not missed yep. by FaZe. It's been converted at a 26 to 20. As Stella picks up the 20th kill here for SSG. FaZe, keep that cushion. Nice shots here as well from Royal 2, just continuing to hold top middle as well. It feels like they have held not just the lead on the scoreboard, but also top middle as well. The oh! fade away! Triple kill with the thrust from Royal 2! Oh, what a thrust that was! Royal 2 just sends himself backwards, hits the perfect shots for the triple kill. And at 31 to 21, that is a hammer blow for SSG to deal with. When wow, with a 10 kill lead here now and all the hype, all the pressure, maybe coming off here. Let's get into a listening with FaZe. Nice camo now, guys. Camo now. Yeah, try to help you get this clean. Yep. I have car on me. Yeah, do the same thing. Do the same thing. Yeah, keep looking. I'm holding him in car. I'm holding him in car. I have camo, guys. I'm just backing up. Watch out, Tabu. Watch out, Tabu. Yeah, I don't think anybody can. Oh, John. Lots on John. Top car. Top car. Top car. Yeah, watch the feet, dude. Nice. Nice. You want it? You want it? Blue vent, guys. Yeah, blue vent. Blue vent. Yeah, yeah. I'll see him. I'll see him. Still the old man, he's just right Nice. Good job, dude. Nice, nice. Huge, 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 huge. I just want yellow. Top car again. Top car again. Top car again. Yeah, yeah. Car three, car three, car three. Watch out. Watch out for Legend. Absolutely. And I can kind of there. Walk He's on the pistol, one in the He's just walking at it with camo. Eddie, man. Nice. Nice. One more, one more eco. They're swanning blue. They're gonna swan blue. One oh, oh, nice right. two, 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 two there, two there. One low, one high. One oh, low, engine bridge reach cellar, you can ape that. There's two pistol. No, no, we're fighting three. One shot engine, one shot engine. Yeah, 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 I think we should. I did, I did, I did. Car three, car three, car three, car three right now. I'm hiding blue street. Work together, guys. Work together. Oh, we're fighting P1 or something. No, kill P1. Kill front yellow. In front blue, in front blue. Yellow, yellow fire, yellow fire. I'm looking yellow fire. Yeah, they're gonna try to watch help. Watch out yellow, watch yellow fire, Brad. Watch out yellow fire. Watch out yellow fire, Brad. Nice, PJ. Nice, good kill. Nice, PJ. Last yellow streams. Last guy yellow streams. Push it up, push it up. Last guy's yellow. Last guy's yellow. Yeah, cross him, cross him. I'm behind him, I'm behind him. 
Back into the game, and Phaser looking to close the game out. Frosty picks up the 40-second kill. It's a 12-kill differential. And it's this man on your screen who's been the catalyst of everything. He's 12-6. and six. And how about a 12-kill differential also being the difference maker? 50-38 the last time these two teams played this game type. And it's looking like deja vu and fantastic news for Phase fans. Oh, Stella almost got turned on himself. The sidekick was a problem for a few moments. Renegade comes in to trade the kill out. And I think that SSG probably recognize at this point, Andy, as experienced as they are, as good as they are, that they might have have to play yet another map of Halo Infinite here. FaZe are looking so strong. Yeah, they want to end this series, so they're quickly realizing that this map will not be the one to do it. It's been an unbelievable game number five here from FaZe. Three camos in a row for FaZe. That's been the difference maker, as well as the man on your screen. He's 13 and seven, six assists to go alongside it as well. And he's reading them like a book. A couple of grenades went down, but didn't quite get the content they would have wanted. Royal 2 looking to move in now quietly once again going about his business. There's three shots, there's a trade. It's going to be done and FaZe Clan answer back on Aquarius Slayer. And what a run that looks like that is their game type, especially when we talk about these two teams facing off against each other in that exact matchup. It's a repeat of the first time those two teams played and you have to think that's probably in the back of FaZe's mind and if we're honest, probably also in the back of SSG's mind as well after having only played that game type about 24 hours ago. In an earlier series, FaZe will repeat, take the game, and bring the series now overall within just one game and look to force us all the way to a game seven. Well, the cool thing is here, if you're an SSG fan, you're starting to worry a little bit. It's like, oh, goodness me, FaZe looked pretty good in that one. You have to say it's one of FaZe's best game types, right? Aquarius is a map where they dominate a lot of different teams, whether it be Flag, whether it be Slayer. But the next game type we're going on to is a SSG favorite. It's Street Strongholds, one that they can certainly put the pressure back on. They certainly can, and just to tee this up, as Space Station Gaming is 2-0 in this game type, Phase 0-2 in Dallas. What did we say earlier? If Phase wanted to win this tournament, the fastest track to do that in terms of the series layout was the earlier games. Those were their game types where they had the advantage. Now we're getting into the later part of the series where Space Station Gaming has the advantage, not just historically, but in Dallas as well. Some of these replays, that triple kill from Royal 2, though. That was the, the final thing you felt that really put the nail in the coffin for them. Just that thrust perfectly oh, timed gosh. as well. And the shot just snaps onto him Ooh. to really extend that lead for them. That's going to fill him with confidence. That's going to fill everyone with confidence. And one thing I took away from the listening with FaZe there, they sound pretty positive. They sound like they're here to play, yeah. and they sound like they're all responding to each other in the way that you would expect from a championship winning team. Yeah, we talk about how important that dynamic is on that squad, and they sound great indeed on the comms, and you would with a 12-kill lead in Aquarius Slayer, and I couldn't agree more. That's another NBA Finals-inspired thrust fadeaway. Just beautiful timing there. The confidence from Royal 2. The thought there is that when there's a player in the courtyard that they're hung out to dry, and Royal 2 knows that, so he thrusts back for the triple kill, does it with style, and now we have a 3-2 to two Space Station lead as FaZe will look to force a final Game 7 of the series. Yeah, if it goes to Game 7 as well, FaZe could close it out right here, right now, in that first series, and SSG won't have an opportunity to reset the bracket, and those are the thoughts now that start coming into oh, the back yeah. of your head. If you're SSG, previous game thinking, just gotta win one more, boys, just gotta win one more, but the more games that slip away, you start thinking about the fact that maybe the whole thing's gonna slip away from you. So they've got to answer back now, and it's the perfect game type and map combination for them to do so. It's Street Strongholds, SSG, damn good at this one. Really good at this game type. That's gonna be in the back of their mind as well. As we said, undefeated in this map game type combination, specifically phase yet to win this game type here in Dallas. Might we just see a bracket reset here and now in game number six? Looks like not just yet because it is a false start on the main stage. Making sure that everything is where you need it to be before we get into this game, but Again, you see FaZe, they're locked in. Space Station, they're locked in. They want to get this one going as soon as possible. That's the week. We can't wait, if we're honest. Uh, I want to get, do it now. I want to do it right now. So do the guys on all sides of the stage here. We can't wait to get into this sixth game. But like you said, that's a big, big advantage here for the side of SSG. But let's not forget, with a team like FaZe, you don't, doesn't matter what the historical record might be. They're going to know how to play this game type. They're going to have a lot of time to watch VOD, not just from Charlotte, but from all of the online 4Ks as well as they approach this event. And they'll know exactly what SSG is going to want to do, not off only the opening, but the overall strategy as well. Don't want to get too ahead of ourselves here because obviously we've got this map in front of us and there's a long way to go. You know, if this could be an SSG reset the bracket right now. We might not go to the game seven, but, but you saw it coming. But I want, smart man. Go on, I want to hear but, it. It's very interesting, the Game 7, when you're looking at the records, right? Because one on one, FaZe find themselves. They lost to Hive yesterday, 50 to 37. That's yeah. a blowout, and it's going to be Live Fire Slayer as our last game. 
Yeah, look at the other side. There's a loss also coming in for SSG in this tournament. And I'm pretty sure that was against Optic Gaming. So yeah. both teams a little bit 50-50 on that game type, which makes it kind of fun to try and predict what's going to happen. Yeah, certainly could be a little bit of a coin flip there. A slight game advantage coming in for SSG. But as you said, losses across the board in Live Fire Slayer. If we get there, which uh, to be honest, we're, we're not ever opposed if to a game seven. But, but We'll go ahead and see. Game six first on your screen. As we mentioned, that's going to be Stronghold Streets. And if we know anything about this game type with how this series has played out so far, this will be an absolute high-paced bloodbath of a game type here. And it's going to come down to individual moments. There's going to be times on the map where there's only one player alive from both teams, and there's a 1v1 engagement to defend a stronghold, to reset a stronghold. And that's where the game is going to be decided. Also, of course, the Rockets. We've already had a Streets game in this uh, this series, which was taken away, of course, by Space Station, who kept it close even without the power weapons. Right. But when they got them, that's when they took over the game. That's when they closed it out. And that's going to be such a vital part of this game as well. FaZe looking to tie up the series. It's 3-2 for Space Station. If SSG win this one, we go again. These two teams in the biggest series of their season so far. It goes without saying now. Three dead off the opening here for SSG. Royal 2 with a rocket crowd. I was four dead off the break. That's about as quick as a start as you could ask for. And at the moment, SSG, I mean, Eco spawned twice, dying twice. <laughs> Wow, look at this trip cap immediately. FaZe Clan is wasting no time. It's a perfect opening for FaZe Clan. Oh, FaZe Clan, look, they might be taking over a little bit here. It is a perfect, perfect start from them. Eco taken oh. down as well. Manages to get the trade at least. So it's a 2v2 on the map, but 34 points already on the board. The triple cap is still in effect here for FaZe. Like you said, three times Eco's come off spawn and been taken down already. It's already now 43 to 0. C will finally be capped, but Renegade will have something to say about that. Flies in with the Bulldog and only takes minimal damage. Bulldog goes woof woof bark, takes him down. And Penguin now finds himself as the last player alive again for FaZe Clan. And we've talked about the high skill ceiling. We feel like FaZe have the highest skill ceiling when it comes to them playing at their best. Well, at the moment, this is how good they can be. Interesting there. Look at Peng the dance between Penguin and Snakebite. Eventually, Snakebite's going to have to double back here over to C and finish it. Does not know where Penguin went. Penguin finally comes around for the trade. And that's what we're talking about at this level of competitive Halo. The dance is so drawn out because both teams have a perfect understanding based on their team's composition of exactly which way they can and can't move around the map. You're going to see consistent trades like that. Really interesting to see Royal 2's decision making here. That is brilliant from Royal 2. I want to take a second to appreciate that. Yeah, he comes out if it gets a one for one trade, but stepped into the stronghold, saw the spawn and decided, hey, I know if we're stepping in this stronghold that someone's going to try and take that pizza jump angle. Instead of trying to just cap it, give him three shots away with someone just flanking onto him, takes the 1v1, gets that kill, SSG do a good job to trade it out, but that's just prime awareness coming in from So Yeah, it really is. You're going to continue to see more and more of those mind games as well, right? One step ahead of whatever the play might look like is what you're going to expect to see from both sides of the stage. 3v3 here momentarily. Well, the momentum from that previous game kind of started to flow over into the start of this one we see on our screens right now. But SSG have stabilized. They've found a way Ooh. to finally slow down this momentum and have control of A and B. But off the back of it, you can see that Phaser picks up another set of rockets. Ooh. And it's another double kill here for Snakebite. Anyway, that's what we talk about, individual plays. Yeah, it looks easy picking up rocket kills. But at this high level, you need to make sure your rocket efficiency is at 100%. There's nobody else you trust more than Snakebite to hit those. Space Station, though. Still with AC control. AC control, but not for long, as you can see that Fades are going to be making the play to convert A back into their hands. Stella taking some damage here from Snakebite. My goodness, those shots were good. And Renegade and Frosty, they capitalize off the back of it. SSG4 dead. And Forget about the record books at this point, Andy. Phaser look phenomenal. And it's a perfect PD trap as well. Frosty stayed alive back A for quite a while. He's going to back off just a little bit here to Cafe to pitch the angles. But right now, they will continue scoring with a very comfortable BC hold and continue even to apply the pressure at A. Yeah, it's brilliant coming in from Phase Clan. I mean, you called it perfectly. Frosty already pushed up, already damaging spawners. And unfortunately, just the pieces fell apart a little bit. The idea was there, but SSG, huge amount of credit to them. They read the situation perfectly, and somehow they've managed to not only keep B in their control, but flip A off the back of it. So FaZe are going to have to break again. Not over just yet. Killing spree there for Renegade. He'll eventually trade out with Bound. But you, as you said, it's a great push from Space Station. Not easy to do out of PD to get the kills you need to get A and B. And now putting more points on the board. They're down by about 60. That lead is certainly being cut down, though. Piece by piece, inch by inch. Space Station Gaming are starting to get a little bit more interested in this game. Nico going to fly forward. He's going to fall, though, and it's going to be three dead again for Space Station. 
B is the call bound, trying to stay alive. What? Just about manages to do so, and now he's got Stellar Sport to support. Oh my god, look at Bound staying alive. How does he stay alive? Those are the bold, crazy plays that we expect to see from Bound. He gets a spawner, but it might not pay off in the end because of the great collapse coming in from FaZe. He saw Royal 2, didn't ever get desperate to get the kill though. He knew what the situation was. He waits for a little bit of help to come in, and not only do they kill Bound, they get two kills off the back of it. It's another set of rockets here going into the hand of FaZe Clan. And Space Station, you can't let this happen. Another killing spree here for Renegade as well. Right now, they're out slaying 39 to 21, just about doubling the kills of their opponents and also doubling their score as well. Penguin last alive, he's trapped in PD, and at the moment, it's not looking like this is the game type that maybe SSG wanted to see. It's Fade who are taking control and looking for yet another triple cap. But do not count SSG out, even though this has been a hot start. SSG can triple cap themselves and turn this game in its head. Renegade was your last player alive for a moment. The reset does come in on A here, and Renegade just being an absolute nuisance staying alive. Might even pick up another one! Oh, oh. Bound's a menace, though! Beautiful answer that clear from Bound. Snakebite, however, will be there to clean up the scraps, but we're getting now to the 140 to 73 mark, and as you said, still a lot of game still to play here. A lot of game, and it's going to be a battle maybe for B. I mean, just to see what the play call is from FaZe. Are they going to try and flip the ends here? Are they going to try and play for C? As B is taken away from them by Space Station. Looks like entry damage and the call will be made off the back of it. Eco though, Penguin focusing their fire. Two fall for FaZe. And all of a sudden, I mean, this has been FaZe, FaZe, FaZe so far in this game. But look at the score. It's 140, 96 and rising. It's Space Station. They are back into this. And it's 100 points the mark they cross. Frosty was your last player alive. Unbelievable team shot coming in from B and B stairs there to isolate the players on the spikes. FaZe was not ready for that team shot in the end. It leads to continued B. C control, and just like that, it is a 25-point game. And the crazy thing is, Andy, look at the slays. It's not close. Space Station should be an outslayed heavily by FaZe, and they are still very much in this game, still scoring as finally FaZe break through onto B. Just like you say, it's 48 to 30 in the slay column. It's a 20-kill difference, but here we are, only a 17-point difference on the scoreboard. SSG staying in this. You have to wonder if they start to heat up, if they get a couple of rockets, if they can make the most of the sandbox if they can make something happen but look at the kill feed two rocket kills again for phase every single power weapon has gone to them every single time and now it's a triple cap for triple them. cap continues eventually b will start to flip that should be a comfortable flip for space station gaming but like you said when these teams are so closely matched the rockets will decide big rounds of slays and big rounds of points on the board as well they cross the 180 mark snakebite's gonna be out of pinch here you can see frosty and him working alongside to try and help Royal 2 survive. Royal 2 can't do so, but by creating that space, now Snakebite has an opportunity to convert B. He gets the conversion. He's still alive here somehow or other. The Bulldog's here as well. Stella peeks around the corner, will be traded out. 2v2 on the map. Snakebite putting on a clinic. Somehow he just gets his heels in to control that little beast that reset. Also now still BC hold for them. 202 to 123. 200 point mark has been crossed. Space Station, who did make an effort to come back in this game, to really send it deep. Well, now FaZe are starting to look like they want to end it here and now. A is going to be flipped into their hands, and you can see already Frosty, he's already inside a C. He's already putting pressure on the tram spawners, and now he's going to hit the shots onto Bound as well. The rotations from FaZe have been exceptional. While well, calling the botanist there, Frosty just flies through, fires a few shots through the ferns and picks up a kill against a red gun player. Not easy to do, especially up against Bound, and it's a killing spree as well. Stella as well, there's one, there's two, maybe it's gonna be three for him. If Stella falls, Bound falls as well, Penguin last alive. Flip B is the call coming in from FaZe, and they will continue scoring. Big run here needed from Space Station, and some very big pushes as well. Can they do it? Can they end this series here? Or will we see a game number seven? Well, if they can get the Rockets, maybe there's a chance. First kill going their way is going to be useful. Renegade trades it out, though. 3v3 on the map. Frosty now moving down towards the Laundry. He'll get taken down as well. And this is a similar pattern to maybe what we saw in the previous game, where the last set of Rockets that FaZe did not get saw Space Station have a chance to get back into this game. Royal 2 wants them. Royal 2 might get them as well with those shots. That's big bounce going to maybe... No, he doesn't have to get the Rockets. They trade out, so two dead for both sides. For the moment, Stellar was the last player alive. One Rocket left in the courtyard. Have to make the play on to see here. 234, they only need 250 points here to win FaZe Clan. B is the call, and you can see FaZe have stacked it up, but the reset comes in at the last second as Penguin gets the kill onto Snake. Ooh, sneaky, sneaky there from Royal 2 on the dumpster. Able to get one kill, but still two dead here for FaZe. No mistakes left here for SSG. FaZe just needs to be patient. Need to wait for some numbers, but here comes Eco. Eco gets the trade and the reset. 
and Fakeclan find themselves three dead. Bound a bit taken down though by Renegade. Stella inside of A and oh my goodness everybody, there's a triple cap here for SSG. What can Renegade do here? He needs to make sure he gets a kill out of this. He does, somehow stays alive as the last player. Two dead here for SSG. The triple cap will be stopped. Bound though. He'll be able to move towards B and control and scoring will still be in the hands of SSG. Snakebiter 1v1, but here comes Royal 2, the longtime duo, to join him. It's a beautiful team shot there. He was not expecting to get double teamed there and music eventually he will fall. Frosty gets one, they flip B. They might be about to close this game out. Space Station Gaming are about to reset the bracket here in Dallas. We might be going the long way. No, FaZe, actually, excuse me, I've misspoken. It's FaZe who are in charge. C gets flipped by SSG. And A now gets reset by FaZe. 250. Just a few moments away here for FaZe. A desperate play on B. It won't happen. And FaZe, keep this series going. Look at that somehow. With fantastic late game work coming in from FaZe to close it out. It was a trip cap. Let's not forget. It was a trip cap around the 170 mark for Space Station. That is dangerous territory as we saw up against Optic Gaming. Optic Gaming at 240 earlier and Space Station at 134. They trip cap, they come back and win. We know that Space Station can bring those games back very easily, but FaZe, they hold strong. They maintain that behold to close out the game and they force us to a game seven in our grand final number one. Take a look at some highlights, but if FaZe takes this, they'll take the tournament. However, Space Station Gaming looking to send us to a second best of seven. Thank goodness you got your head screwed on. I got well into that. I was getting carried away. And now, like you say, it all comes down to a game at seven. And the butt that we talked about earlier, it's a strange sentence I didn't think I'd say at the commentary <laughs> desk, but it makes a little bit more sense because we're talking about the Slayer game type, right? We're talking about the game type which both teams have let slept through their fingers a little bit. And it's very unpredictable to see what is going to happen and who is going to potentially win the championship. Could be FaZe, or we could go again if SSG can answer back. And let's not forget, just in case you're just joining us here in the room at DreamHack or, or online, standing room, room only, by the way, we hope you're doing well here in Dallas. Just in case you didn't catch it, Space Station Gaming was up 3-1 to one in this series. They've had multiple chances to take this series and get ready for a second best of seven. Instead, FaZe has rallied back with their backs against the wall, do or die, in both of our last two games to now force us to a series and potentially tournament deciding Game 7 Slayer. I mean, FaZe have shown great resilience. There was a couple of moments in, in this series where you're kind of looking at the main stage, you're looking at the players like, who's going to be the guy? Who's stepping up here? And a little bit of dejection sometimes on the side of FaZe. I mean, they don't like losing games. It's very simple to see that for when you look at them. But Space Station now, well, I mean, you look at that, it's, it's, it's a tough series for them to answer back now in this game seven. You go ahead three to one, like you say, you've got all the advantages you could ask for. And then it's not just the way that they've let two games fall through their fingers and slip away. It's the style in which yeah. it's happened as well. FaZe have just taken them apart in the last two maps. They absolutely have. And let's also talk about the slaying difference yet again in that last game six. FaZe outslayed 84 to 50. It's not close. By 34 kills, an unbelievable number. That tells you in the slaying department that FaZe knows what they're doing. Their objective efficiency, though, still questions to be raised when you outslay a team that heavily. However, they get the job done. That's what's most important. They get the extra W on the board. Now we'll look at their overall Slayer stats here at the HCS Global Invitational. And you can see that there's one more in the last column for Space Station Gaming and a couple more on the side of FaZe that will win. And most importantly for FaZe, Game five wins, series winning wins in Slayers that have come at the back end of a tight series. So for FaZe, you would say, if you're looking through the tournament, they've been the ones that have iced up and really made these games count. They have. One thing we got to also note, we talked about it earlier, but a shout out to our stats man in the back, Easy Mac, pointing out, we did see FaZe suffer a 50 to 37 loss on Live Fire Slayer to Hive, the artist formerly known as the Avengers, just yesterday. If we take a look at the record that SSG has, they're two and one. They have a 50 to 35 loss to Optic. However, a 50 to 40 win versus Native White. They're two and one, and you do see FaZe at one and one. One thing to point out here that is very easy to adjust for SSG in these slayers against FaZe. It's just got to do a better job with overshields. It got to do a better job with them. Power-ups have always been in the hands of FaZe. Yeah. The last game, Rockets, Rockets, Rockets was always in the hands of FaZe. That happened in the previous layer on, on streets as well. And you can't let it happen. It's just too simple for good players to put those to use. Now, with the overshield and the sniper rifle on the map here, SSG 
if they're not going to be able to use it themselves, they need to get it out of the hands of FaZe. You need to play it in the way that Snakebite was using ammo up yeah. of some of those weapons when he felt like he was about to die. And you're looking at stats here, you're looking at Slayers in this series. These are the players who have performed the best. Yeah, what an interesting damage differential too, right? These two are very, very close in terms of their overall KD and kills, but a huge damage differential just tells you about the play style yeah. of these two players, right? Penguins getting in, doing the dirty work. Royal 2 sitting back and picking up the same amount of kills while taking a lot less damage. Two things that I'm focused on in this particular Game 7, Mark. The first is, where's the opening damage? We could see time and time again, FaZe is not just getting the opening damage, but they are also going to convert on that. I'll pause the thought for a second, though, because a very important important stat line coming in from the back. Map deciding records, phases 4-0 and oh here. SSG 0-2 oh on a series deciding game. Well, the story is here before we head into this final game is that we are going to have one of these teams potentially end that drought. Phase, if they win that this game right now, we're going to win the series. They are going to win the championship. SSG, they've got a long road ahead of them, but they have to win this game in order to reset that bracket and set us up for another best of seven. So this could well be the final game of DreamHack Dallas, and FaZe Clan are going to hope it is. They certainly are. And FaZe, as we said uh, before we saw that stat line come up, two things that I'm going to be looking out for. FaZe is getting the opening damage. That's converting to the first kill. That's converting to the rocket grabs. Earlier in this game, it would convert into a sniper grab as well as overshield control. The second thing we need to watch is it feels like SSG may be playing a little bit less confident than normal, right? We need to see Bound flying out. We need to see Stellar flying out and making those low percentage plays that could result in really high risk, high reward plays. When they play confident they can be at their best i think in the last two games phase has got the opening damage which has given them confidence control and it has snowballed into power up and power weapon control we need to see as you alluded to earlier space station really controlling the pace of the game first four kills are going to be vital here as well i mean you look at the opening strategy of the last two games and phase got a three dead in the aquarius slayer and we saw how that game went and then they got a four dead off the rip in that street stronghold and from there, it was so difficult for Space Station to get back on the map for a good 60 seconds or so. Yeah. Not only they're pinned on split spawns, but they've got to go against Rocket, Stalker, Bulldog, whatever it might be. And here in this game, they cannot afford to at least trade out some kills to allow themselves back on the map. And really force FaZe to fight a fair fight. And one thing that's most interesting as well, Slayer Streets and Slayer Aquarius, which are the Slayers we've seen so far in this series, are typically really fast-paced Slayers. Live Fire Slayer gives you the biggest opportunity to slow the game down. And with as much as riding on this game, you have to think, gonna be so much caution from both sides to make sure they're not the team making the big mistakes. However, when that overshield's popping, guess what? You gotta go. And that'll be the ultimate test here in game number seven. We are underway. It's a game seven here in our grand finals phase. Looking to close things out, and we're looking to reset the game because it's not quite ready yet. But when we do get back into it, the story will still be the same here, Andy. FaZe, if they win this one, will be our champions. If it's SSG, we reset the bracket. And it, I love going back to what we were talking about at the start of the tournament as well, right? We were saying this is a team here in, on our screens, FaZe Clan, who was built to win championships. One of the most difficult, I kind of alluded to this at the start of this final, one of the most difficult team changes, you know, spoke to Snakebite about this, he's ever had to make, you know, Making the, the, the change from Lethal to Renegade, it was one of the toughest things he's ever had to do in his entire career. And the reason it was done was to try and win championships, right? And if you don't win championships after having to do something like that, it can really weigh on your mind. But a championship win here maybe will validate that decision for, for, the, for the whole roster. Yeah. And for Space Station, it's been a drought for a long time as well. Was Bound the right guy? I think everyone says that Bound is the right guy. He's proved that he's the right guy, but the only thing that's missing from that resume now is a championship. That's right, that's the only thing missing. And also, you have to think about the trajectory. What this means for the year, right? We are now into the meat, the heat of the regular season here as we get ready for back-to-back-to-back -back -back events all summer long. There's a lot of Halo to be played here. And what it would mean for the trajectories of these teams, both of these teams not just wanting the championship here, but to be the title holders heading into the rest of the events for the year. Yeah, and I mean, the next event is only three weeks away. Yeah. So we're going to be flying through LAN events. There's going to be no waiting for these teams to really adjust too much. A little bit of practice is going to be going in, but we are going to be going straight at each other once more. But you can see the fist bumps are going down. And everybody who's watched these sports events knows that that means the game is about to start. The game seven, right at the end of this series, we were hoping to see 
is about to take place. What a series has been so far as well. What a weekend it's been at DreamHack Dallas. This could be your final game of the weekend here if FaZe is able to close it out. However, SSG looking to send us the distance to reset the bracket for another best of seven. Everything riding on this game. 50 kills to win, 12 minutes on the clock. And what could be the most important 30 seconds of opening strategy for these two teams to decide who is going to have the momentum, who is going to get those weapons, and who is going to get map control to turn it into a lead for FaZe. This could be championship match for SSG. They want to go again. Crowd here excited at DreamHack Dallas and so much riding on this matchup between these teams. Only one game to decide the series. Bound gets the first kill, Bound gets the sniper rifle. Much, much better from Space Station. It's only one kill, but FaZe haven't got control. Now Renegade's gonna get spotted out, has to back away. Well, only for a second as the trade will come in. One thing you might have heard it all over the weekend when it comes to these listening as we take a look at the overshot popping up. Snakebite sitting right on it. Great shot against Bound, pinning him back. The flag comes around as well. Penguin's going to win this one. Snakebite somehow stays alive and gets two, and that might be an overshield now going into the hands of FaZe. Ooh, Seller hits the body shot as well, but Seller cannot convert. It's perfect timing, perfect push coordination from FaZe as well. Now they lead 4-3. 4-3, but they have the ability now to push. Royal 2 is on the tower. Penguin, he's in the death screen as Snakebite flies forward with that overshield. Overshield looking to take advantage and get the snipe out of the hands of SSG as well. The Overshield push from FaZe was effective. They have a lead and they have the weapons. Man, Seller stayed alive. You might have noticed it off, off screen. So long back tower. Eventually he ekes out a few extra kills. But still, as you mentioned, that will be now a three kill lead off of our opening for FaZe. And once again, as I said, this map is going to allow these teams to slow things down just a bit. Just because of how much pressure is on these teams. We'll slow down at 8 to 5. Trades come in, in and around green. Snakebite drops down to keep the pressure on, though. It's going to be another kill going into the hands of FaZe, who are now up 9-5, to five, almost doubling the amount of kills that SSG have on the board for now. Game slowing down because the overshield is going to be coming up in around 20 seconds. Controlling this side of the map is so vital to have the advantage here. Not only do you have the potential of the shroud screen being available to you, but you have the height over at the tower. Like I said, this map is going to play as tactical as it comes. As shroud screen in the hands of Snakebite, by the way. Here comes Bound, though, just flying into C-Box. That's going to provide some equal pressure from the other side to get some good angles for SSG. Here goes the shroud. Shroud goes down. Overshield gets grabbed. Even though two kills do go over to Space Station, it's the second in a row now for FaZe. If that nade hit, I swear, a fraction of a second earlier, Snakebite dies. Killing spree, though, for him on screen. Somehow, he sneaks away and still has 50% overshield left as well. There it goes, though. Snakebite's 5-0 and oh in this Game 7. He has been, in my personal opinion, the standout player for FaZe so far in this tournament. So many Game 5, so many big moments where he has produced the goods that makes him one of the best players in Halo's history. 11 and 8 the score though, even though Snakebite has started this game well, there's a little bit of resilience being shown here by SSG. Heavy Ness C pressure here for FaZe. We'll have to see if Space Station tries to take advantage of that. Instead they try to go low, those kills will be traded out. So far though, 2v2 on the map. Snake by making a low push here. Yeah, having to stay alive as well. Doesn't really have too many shots in that heat wave to play with as well. And for the fact that SSG have let two overshields sneak away, well, kept this game pretty close. But I tell you what, Snake by at the moment, he's six and zero. Sniper rifle coming up as well. The kills being timed perfectly again for FaZe to grab one of the power ups. Like you said, Space Station Gaming keeping it close really just until moments ago. Now a six kill lead is a pretty heavy one here. And FaZe gonna look to just play very, very disciplined Halo. They also have sniper control up on the top of the tower. And what a better time. It's a perfect opportunity for a listen in here with the FaZe clan up by six. Wait, 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 Obi and 20 guys? Yes! Another one! Come on, 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 Nice, nice, John. John. Back up him again. Yeah, I'm backing up. I'm backing up. Fine, fine, fine. Chris, how long for you? How long for you? Uh, it's no, not for a bit. Not for a bit. Congrats on Ew, listen, can we re-hit cuts? Can we re-hit cuts? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm ready. Let's go. Shoulder heat wave in like five seconds. Shoulder heat wave in like five seconds. Right, I'm just John, I'm sliding out. John, I'm sliding out. Ah, you're so. Three kill advantage. Three overshields in a row now for FaZe. And you have to say, Space Station felt like 
from our point of view, yeah. then they were in the position to grab that. Took the words out of my mouth. It felt like the angles that they had gave them an opportunity to at least challenge that sniper at tower to try to go for that overshield. Instead, Renegade ekes out with it, but just like that, it's still a four kill game at 21-17. Time in on the heat wave as well. You just saw they've picked that up as well. So the difference between the two teams, still four, which is very manageable for SSG, but they cannot afford to keep letting these power ups. That's the difference yeah. through their fingers because Otherwise, the lead is going to be so difficult to pull back Renegade in this game. Six and six. But that play, that grab of the overshield might be a difference maker. Oh! oh! Renegade wins a battle. He had no business winning there. Now another battle here as that overshield gets ready to be battled for yet again. And you have to say, it feels an awful lot like Streets, right? FaZe is winning, but by just a little bit with full power-up control, what happens if SSG starts to get some OVs? Well, somehow, Penguin stayed alive long there and managed to extend his life long enough for teammates to get in a position to keep him alive. 24 to 20 is the score. Space Station starting to get a little bit of control of the map now. But as you say, all eyes really from everybody here and at home are on where that next overshield's going. It's about to pop in around 20 seconds or so. Repulsor is going to be in the hands here of Stella as well, so he can get up close and personal. Now he's getting all the information of where those spawns are coming in, so SSG are going to be careful not to get pinched here. What happens with the C push? Kills being traded out, and like right now, 2v2 here. This is big before the OV pops in 11 seconds. Love this from Stella, trying to be aggressive, trying to put pressure on, but needs to survive. Royal 2 trying to challenge him himself. Another flank coming in, he's going to go back up the chimney, the reverse Santa Claus. Royal 2 though. He's going to pop up and say hello. Takes him down to the death screen for a few moments as that six kill lead is starting to extend here. Oh! But the overshield does go to Eco, but no back smack. Somehow Eco stays alive. It looked like the back whack was going to come in, but Eco stays alive. They get their first overshield of the game, and the game is still within five somehow. Five kills the difference, but like you say, most importantly, finally SSG get control of an overshield. Renegade is going to be trying to flank through green, get some good angles, gets one onto Eco. And the game really is on a knife edge here. The series is on a knife edge. The tournament is on a knife edge. Once again, we could not ask for a better grand final between these two. 34-27, the phase lead now goes to eight here. Snakebite with a sniper rifle in hand. That was three dead. And now continue control. What kind of angle is Snakebite going to take here on the nesting green spawners? One headshot here and maybe we might be thinking about phase running away with this one. Winning a game seven slayer once again. Oh my! goodness sends one to the heavens and it's blessed on its way down that plasma grenade is a game changer guess what the slaying dominance continues from phase clan now they're up by 11 kills in this game which is really where it counts 447 left on the clock this is the home stretch for phase and you have to think this is looking like it might be their event Snake by 12 and 6, double positive in a game 7. Renegade chasing down Penguin for the killing spree. He's got Bound in front of him. Have a sleep, my friend. Puts him in the dirt as well. And the triple kill might have just sealed the deal here for FaZe. They're doing it with style. It's a 12 kill lead here. Only 8 kills to go for FaZe Clan. And what kind of miracle does Space Station need to bring this game back? Stella gets one, but you feel like maybe this is just too much of a mountain to climb. Frosty gets another. It's 7 to go. Now for FaZe. Overshield is pretty much the only way back into the game for SSG, but you know that FaZe are going to be challenging a couple of trades and they move within maybe four, maybe five kills of closing this out. Royal 2 gets the first kill as well. Nico gets taken down to no shields, but where is the Overshield going? Frosty with the spike grenades. Doesn't get the kill. Did Stella get it? Looks like Seller should have that Overshield, should have a clean on scoreboard here. He does get it, but oh god! He oh, gets... he's got shredded! Absolutely tuna melted there! No Overshield to play with. That's a huge, huge team shot coming in from FaZe Clan. There will be no Overshield to play with, and still, just like that, a nine kill lead for FaZe. Oh. And they sniff him out as well. He gets taken down. The bottom mid push coming in from FaZe, but they're four dead! And even though they only need four kills, all of them are in the black screen right now. It's 11 to go here for SSG. There is a chance. How does FaZe play this here? Now it's a six kill game. First pick for Penguin as well. Not so fast, even though FaZe Clan. Now seven kills. Somehow Frosty off screen gets one. If he can get two, this would be huge. A six kill game, 47-41. So FaZe... Three deaths to play with though for SSG. Continues to trade. As long as FaZe continues to play this trade game, they will take the tournament. However, easier said than done. Sniper rifle out top middle. This would be big for SSG. Do they want to overextend to try and get it, though? Because this way you can kind of keep FaZe at an arm's length. Renegade might be the player to watch here, playing for those spike grenades. Penguin's got the sniper away. Pressure on his shoulders. 
there is just enough room for error here where Space Station could make this happen. Double push coming in from FaZe. Face. Double push coming in from FaZe. It's the flank from Renegade. Snake by picks up one. It's two to go now for FaZe. Stays alive here, bottom mid. So far, so good here. They get that first trade. Can they sneak out another one as well? No! 43 48. 219 49 on the board. One more kill here to FaZe. And they will be your champions. The drought might be over. The team change will be verified. And FaZe, they managed to do it. And who else? But the captain. Snake by steps up on the 50th. And FaZe Clan with their first Halo championship. They're back on top. What did we say? This roster was assembled to do one thing. The biggest roster change we could think of in quite some time. Renegade joins the squad. And not many months later, FaZe Clan will take the stage as champions here at the HCS Global Invitational at DreamHack Dallas. Might have been the iciest performance we've seen. Game five, game five, game seven. Face Clan, they win them. It's as simple as that. Give it up here, Dallas, for your champions, Face Clan. And we wouldn't have it any other way. All the way to a game seven before Face can call themselves champions. And there's one thing we can say for sure on set. They've earned it. They certainly have indeed. They have been absolutely phenomenal this tournament. But like I say, it might be the iciest tournament the win that we've seen. They went deep. They had game fives and game seven to win. Well, at the end of it, they got a championship. Let's see what they have to say. Let's send it down to Blaze for the interview. Thank you so much, on set and Bra, for the cast. DreamHack, give it up one more time for FaZe Clan as they are your champions of the DreamHack Invitational. Now, I'm going to start here at Renegade because, Renegade, this is your first victory in red with a FaZe Clan jersey. Tell me about how this feels for you because this was the goal to play with these guys and be back on top. Uh, I mean, it feels amazing. We got the win. We clutched up on the whole team. But, uh, I mean, the season is still starting, so I'm glad we got this win, but back to work. What was it like playing up against those guys once again on this main stage here? You know, you used to team with them, but now going up against them, you know, uh, how was that for you? Uh, I mean, it's bittersweet, you know? Oh, my God. It's bittersweet. Like, I like them. I wish them the best, but, you know, someone has to win. Somebody got to win, okay? And you're a champion once again. Going to move down here towards the middle, okay? Frosty, once again, okay? It's been, a, it's been a while since you got the trophy. Tell me, how's this one feeling for you? Feels great. We, we finally put together the team that we wanted, uh, put in the work. I mean, it, what, we had a three-month break in the off-season or, like, mid-season. But, yeah, we've been grinding super hard for this win, and that's what we came out and did. That's exactly what y'all did, okay? Moving on over here to the Snipe Guy Royal 2, okay? Absolutely frying all tournament. Talk to me about how this one feels for you, man. I mean, it feels great. Uh, we you know, had a rough season last year. Uh, just couldn't get any uh, momentum going. You know, a lot of second places, sixth places, it was kind of rough. But, uh, you know, picking up Renegade, they're just all eyes for it, and this is, uh, this is what we formed the squad for it. Definitely is, okay? Now, in this series, you guys were down 3-1, okay? What was going on through your head? What were you guys talking about to really say, let's end this now, let's not go for another reset and have to do this again? I mean, we just take it one game at a time. It's 3-1, and we're just like, I mean, it's just one game, one game after another. There's, just, I mean, we just know how good we are, and even though it doesn't matter if we're down 3-0, 4-0, 9-0, like, we know we can win, so that's what we did. Keeping it simple, you guys been in these situations plenty of time, okay? One game at a time. PJ, come on in for me a little bit, okay? Team captain over here, man. How does it feel to win with this squad? Like I said, them, this was the goal, and you guys finally got this one done. Yeah, it feels great. You know, uh, Charlotte ended pretty poorly for us. You know, we felt like we really had it, uh, but we were really humbled by it. Just had to get back to work. Uh, obviously, coming out here and getting a win is big for us, but like John said, we just got to keep moving forward. You know, long season ahead, so right back to work for us. Definitely a long season ahead, okay? And with everybody out there supporting you, what, what's one thing that you want to say to those FaZe fans out there? Just thank you so much for all the support, all the love, everyone here. Thank you for cheering on all the Halo players. Um, you know, just much love. Thank you guys so much. Now, I want to talk to Coach, too, for a little bit, okay? Because Coach Royal One, you've been with these guys through thick and thin, getting them to their best now. Talk to me about the evolution of them over this last year to really get back to this point. What are you proud of when it comes down to these four players? Dude, I'm so proud of our resilience and how hard we work. Like, not everyone sees how hard we work when we practice online, but, like, we knew why we lost Charlotte. We went home the very next week, and we just, we just tried our best to get better and button up the fundamentals and like everything that we did bad in Charlotte we did good here and I'm so proud of the guys for how hard they worked. 
Definitely a victory well-deserved here on the main stage. Now, it's been about a year since you guys touched the trophy, so I'm going to let you have your moment right now. Everybody, once again, give it up for FaZe Clan!